What's going on? Six o'clock. Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. NBA play-in tournament underway. Two games last night as the Lakers ground the Pelicans. 110-106. to Pelican star Zion Williamson is believed to suffer a left hamstring injury last night. He had 40 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists before had, having to leave in the final minutes of crunch time. Tests coming later today. And the Kings take down the Warriors 118-94. to Clay Thompson, rough night from the field. 0 of 10 and 0 of 6 from 3. Cowboys finally made another addition to their backfield after adding Ronald Jones earlier in the offseason, signing running back Royce Freeman to a one-year deal. Freeman had 319 yards on 77 carries and two touchdowns last year for the Los Angeles Rams. He's a third-round pick out of Denver in 2018. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Wednesday morning, welcome to the middle of your week on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. RKW is brewed by 8th and Roast on 104.5 The Zone. We are Marcus Mariota days away from the 2024 NFL Draft, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh, our producer, and myself, Will Bowling, here to talk about it. 615-737-1045 is the number. What's up? Good morning. We said we're not using That's player numbers for countdowns. No. That is when you are in single digits. Mm -mm -mm. When you're in single digits, it's great. When you are, we are 97 days until football time in 10. Yeah, I don't care. Okay. We're a week away. That's we're a week away. Week away. One week. week Let's away. get there fast. Who's another week in a day. Eight. We're Lamar Jackson away from the there NFL we go. Draft. No, look, if I knew somebody on your team that was, uh, <laughs> it was. We had one. We are Kenny Pickett. Oh. Nah, I kid. Boom, 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 boom. I kid. By the way, I saw Lamar coming into the facility yesterday, yeah. or whatever day it was this week. They got a facility. And they're they're sitting. The castle. They do. <laughs> they do actually have a facility. It's not just like a trailer Sorry, set we don't up have on to the share side. a facility with a college <laughs> program. It's <laughs> a good burn. That is a, um, that is a good point. But why are they, like, trying to pick on Lamar's weight? They're like, Lamar looks like he's tri slimmed down. He's the new Oprah. He looks yeah. like he's slimmed down a little, like Lamar was ever heavy. He, I thought he did get a little thick last year. Well, maybe he, a little thick, he did, but, he did, you know. Yeah, I'm with football thick. He's not like yeah. Blubber Boy over here. Yeah, you no, know, he's not out around. here. No, he's not Willie the Whale yeah. out here. There's a great Photoshop on the internet uh, from a post-practice <laughs> interview where Lamar grabbed a, a giant bag of popcorn from the concession, and someone just made him look like a total fat-ass slob. <laughs> oh, no. It is hilarious because he, he just does not look like Lamar at all. Yeah. But he's doing this to, for the hits, Good right, him, and everything. Yeah, like he's he's getting thicker or now thinner probably because he need a little bit of speed. I did think he either chose to get down or the muscle that he added, because I think it's probably more muscle than anything, somewhat played into it. But he stayed healthy the entire mm -hmm. season, so there's a benefit to him. Thick Mar is what he is now. Wow. That's good. <laughs> Thick Mar. I like that. You Sounds like, like a that? good candy bar. Try the new Thick Mar <laughs> with nougat. And caramel. You know what? That's, that's a madman ad right there. I got to start I watching that. I still got to watch again. that. Yeah, it is. It is. Thick Mar. Uh, I didn't realize he's been trolled, man. I would have joined in. Yeah, I just saw that. <laughs> All right, after he burned me with the Get on your ex thing. and find the picture. And yeah, join in. I got it. My bad, man. My bad, Bird. We should be better. Now. It is Wednesday. Will, good morning. How are you? I'm great. A little tired. No, I'm feeling great. Oh, okay. Why would I be right. tired? Well, you had a big event last night. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> Hanging out. Yeah. yeah it's always uh, fun being Peyton Kennedy's plus one, as seen on TV. <laughs> as seen on TV. She's been super busy, man. 
Yeah. There's tons of stuff going Every, on. I know. Everywhere. Summertime in, in Nashville is when everything kicks off. Love it. And this little spotting rain today, man. We'll get past that and have a nice day. Yeah. It's spotting rain and then a little bit tonight. But other than that, man, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time last night. Uh, great event at Fun Recovery uh, here in Nashville. And a uh, lot of former Titans, a lot of uh, outstanding football players uh, for a good cause. And uh, raising money for people who... Um, need mental health services and need therapy, whether that's drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and things of that nature. Uh, very cool. Yeah. Again, being my girlfriend's plus one. I'm not important to be at these things by myself. But look, look at you with a sugar mama out here, man. <laughs> a sugar mama for events. Yeah, we're, just, we're, we're trying. For events, we're man. Trying. To her, yeah, you can't, can't go to another until we get the invite. How about that? That is a good event. They, I think they came on the show last year, actually, to promote that. Um, just, I think, something that they continue to grow too, which is really good. Cause so many players live here. Oh, yeah. you know, they just either retire here or, or they want to come here. Yeah. Or they yeah. just want to come here, maybe even still playing. And in the off season, like Kittle, George Kittle, yeah. have a house here. Yeah. There's so. numerous guys here um, that okay. have them to your point. Kay, like it's crazy. I was talking to one guy um, who said he left his gold jacket in a hotel yeah. uh, before he came over here. So he didn't have his gold jacket on a uh, hall of fame jacket. That's a wild thing to leave at a hotel wow but uh, he was like yeah i'm out in california they wouldn't let me live in nashville <laughs> okay that's so funny Fair enough. yeah i guess so. so i'm thankful they do let let me live in nashville. <laughs> exactly dog i mean seriously uh but everybody's here it was i was having a conversation with somebody like last week about who all is here and it's just, it's just shocking and surprising but nashville is like the perfect spot because you got the airport get you to the west coast i mean it's and that's growing too Last oh, time I yeah. went to the airport, I was shocked by how it looked. I felt the same way over the weekend. That hotel there is done too. Yep. Is what it? is it? A fort? What? Hilton. Hilton. It's a Hilton. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah it, the the airport's nice. Like there's so many different restaurants in there now, and they've got like everything in terms of local places, including Eighth and Roast. Yep. In you know the terminals, like whatever you want, you can get there. Hmm. Yeah, no, nah, Nashville is it. It is it. And today we have an it show on Wednesday. Capital IT. Capital IT. Coming up this morning, VFL and two time Super Bowl champion Trey Smith on yeah. the program at two 820. Time. Yo, Trey. Two time. The pride of Jackson, Tennessee will stop by at 820. Looking forward to talking with him. He has had uh, quite a crazy offseason, to say the least. Uh, I know a lot of people have seen the story of the way he sprung into action in a heroic way at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade. Uh, he was at WrestleMania over the weekend and was honored for his role in protecting a kid, specifically protecting a group of young people uh, from a uh, just terrible situation at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade on a scary day. So uh, we could talk about a lot with Trey, uh, yeah. to say the least, in our 15 minutes with him. And uh, I know he was in Knoxville as well. He was Over the weekend of the Orange and White I, I love seeing now his his group, his era with Jawan and Dobbs. Them, they're yeah. they're like the new group inside. Like they're they're somewhat getting older, but like still go back and still be able to touch the universe. It's kind of cool watching them be that that Solid group of kids group going too. back. I don't know if we've seen Jawan go back often as as ever as of late. Which he's about to have a another big year because he's, he's going to the that Niners, contract. Right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to say Trey Smith, the one that the Titans uh, did pass over and did not draft. Yeah, yeah. just wanted to say that. That's why he's a two-time Super Bowl champion. Yeah. Two-time. I'm champion. sure he's now just laughing. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Just... And should be coming up on the deal soon. I won't bring mm -hmm. it up because players, boy, all you want to do is focus in on the season. But I, I'm expecting Trey to make a nice little increase, As man. It should. Be real cool. Rhett Bryan stops by at 9 o'clock this morning in hour number four. We are talking pass catchers with Titans Radio's executive producer this morning. Tight ends and wide receivers. That is how you know you are getting closer to the beginning of the draft when we start talking about positions the Titans desperately still need. Both of them. And big needs. even her Coach Callahan mentioned tight end. Like, that right there was, was fascinating. That, hey, they need more tight ends. And, of course, everybody here has been thinking about the three that's in-house. You know, and say, all right, we're fine here. And, no, you're actually not fine. You need more bodies at the tight end position. And I get what Coach was saying, too. Uh, that's one thing that's super unique about camp is we're going to cover every player there, all 90 of them. But legitimately, and this is the player side of me coming out, 
some dudes are unless they make their case in a different situation or make their case by making plays in practice. They are camp bodies. Yeah, and that, you're right. It's just, it, but it's on you to create to, your own future. And guys have created their own future. You know, obviously this is a new coaching staff, and so we'll see. You know what type of undrafted free agents could yeah. possibly make the roster here, but it is something that happens, mm-hmm. and you got to give a lot of credit to those guys and. Yeah, Callahan said he was at least wanting five tight end bodies in yeah. camp. So whether, you know, they decide to draft one later on and and we'll see if that happens. But I do think, you know, when you look at Josh Wiley and Chiga Conquo, still have a lot to prove, mm-hmm. both of them. They do. Uh, Julius Chestnut, I felt like, was a guy that made a way for himself last year in camp. And as far as making the name. He is, yeah. He ended up coming back. I'm I'm super interested to see what's going to happen with Hassan. I, I just Me too. don't know. We'll, too. we'll get those answers at some point, right? I was listening to a podcast yesterday that suggested the NFL draft should always be the week after the Masters. I couldn't agree more. Why this feels that? like a dead week. Yeah. There's still lots to talk about. Obviously, there always is now in the city of Nashville and Transfer Portal and all these things that we're going to get into here in a minute, but... How great would it be to go from Master Sunday straight into the week of the NFL draft? I think that'd be pretty solid right there. Yeah, I'm all about carrying the momentum, so keep it going. Uh, but, of course, the 30 visits, though, too, and the extra amount of lies we'll get this uh, week. Don't, don't, don't crowd my take <laughs> with facts. I gave you a take. I don't need you to, to build, a, build a reason as why it can't happen. That's you're, not what we do here. You're telling me, NFL, keep going. Keep going. I started right. with an opinion, then I filled in the facts on, on the back end. 615 737 1045 is our number. How do you fix the transfer portal? I don't think we have enough time in our next segment to talk about all of the solutions, but how can coaches and parents affect change in the transfer portal? There was an interesting conversation we're going to bring to you uh, from 247 Sports yesterday. We'll talk about that coming up next and uh, an interesting day in college football yesterday. That's next. Fellas, if you're feeling tired, grumpy, have noticed a lack of motivation and drive, have weight gain and loss of muscle mass, these could all be signs of low testosterone levels. At Low T Center, they make it easy to get your levels checked. There's just a simple blood test with their on-site lab. You'll get your results back in about 25 minutes. Low T Center is not your typical doctor's office either. It's a concierge medicine for men. There are physicians specialized in treating low testosterone with customized treatment for each patient. Most health insurance is also accepted for the treatment, and they have affordable and convenient treatment options, including physician monitor self-inject treatments for established patients that ship directly to your home each month, so there's no need to drive to the facility each week. Right now at Low T Center, it's only $25 to get your T-levels tested, with results back in about 25 minutes. Make your health and quality of life a priority. Go to LowTCenter.com to book your online appointment today. That's LowTCenter.com. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care.
RKW is brewed by 8th and Rose on 104.5 The Zone. Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling with Robert Walsh hitting all the right buttons, including ours. Coming up, we're going to talk a little bit of transfer portal. Big words. How do coaches and parents help solve a lot of the problems with the transfer portal on the front end of a kid going to college? That's coming up in just a moment. But first, we go to the phones. Greg is in Rhode Island. Go ahead, Greg. Good morning, guys. Um, You know, the... I definitely want to take Joel in the first round. And the only thing that kind of keeps me up at night or gives a little pause is when I think back to the 2013 NFL draft when the Titans took a chance on Mr. Warmack. And that was the 10th, uh, the 10th pick in that draft that oh. year. And it's just, I don't know, that kind of gives some pause to me sometimes thinking, okay, that's, that's a really high pick. And, you know, there's no guarantees at that position. And, and just on an unrelated note, how weird that draft was, both Kenny Vaccaro and DeAndre Hopkins were taken in the top 30 mm-hmm. and both later became Titans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> true. I, I don't – don't you put that evil on me comparing Joe Alt to Chance Warmack, first <laughs> well, of all. Good thing I wasn't here for that. <laughs> Chance Warmack was uh, also a guard, thankfully. Uh, it was not a tackle. I heard he was – it was a great dude. <laughs> I there we go again. Of, he was a, great was a good dude. dude. A lot of great dudes. I would not want to protect my quarterback. <laughs> the good guy yeah. award, man. I remember him with the shirt up and everything in college. Oh, yeah. uh, and he had big munch, belly, which yeah. is crazy. He I, did have, yeah, he had munch. Which is crazy. He had a head coach munch. Head coach, head coach munch. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a, a different conversation right there. Good point. Ooh, Will. That's, Your boy Justin Hunter was drafted in that 2013 Titans draft as well, number 34 overall. Look at Justin Hunter, man. Got himself a game-winning touchdown catch against the Chargers that season. That, that was just one Good of times. those types of draft classes right there, Will. Uh, Chance Warback was 10th overall. Justin Hunter was number 34. Uh, <laughs> Don't do this to yourself. Connecticut cornerback Bleedy Ray Wilson. Ooh, Who? Bleedy. Bleedy Ray Wilson. Y'all not familiar with his game? No. Oh. Consider yourself lucky, respectfully. Uh um, let out? What? Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? What are you talking about? He bled out? Yeah, he didn't, he didn't oh, my gosh. <laughs> if you're going to say corny, I'm going to take my time to say that. 97 that overall. <laughs> uh, Brian Schwinky played a little bit at center at a Cal right. at 107. And then mm. three other guys that I do not remember. LeVar Edwards from LSU. Uh... Khalid Wooten from Nevada and Damian Stafford, a safety out of Nebraska. Oh, so anyway, that was not a, uh, a, a draft that really <laughs> yielded any long-term contributors. I was going to say, I'm making an ugly face right now to that class. <laughs> and what year I was lived this? it. <laughs> 2013. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I lived it. I was a sophomore in high school in that draft class. I remember like it was yesterday, Man, that I Chance could... Warmack. We were so confident Chance Warmack was going to be excellent. We really were, and he was not. Which is why I'm going defense. Okay. All right. Save that for <laughs> 720, please. Is that the pick please. you gave to Jim Wyatt, too, for his list? I'll tell you in, in the next hour. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jim Wyatt also, uh, TennesseeTitans.com. If you're unfamiliar, he always does a media <laughs> mock draft where everyone in Titans media gets to do a pick. And he may or may not have uh, summoned a former producer of ours. And that's, that former producer of ours may, be, may have told him, are you sure? <laughs> yeah. I Jar- Jarvis Schaefer may have been summoned to give a pick. J- uh, Jim Wyatt actually texted me to get Robert Walsh's pick. Did he? Nice. So our own producer. I'm very honored. Pick. I was so honored that I told Buck, hey, I was involved in the, the media pick for Jim Wyatt. And he said, well, don't be so uh, uh, accomplished in yourself because B- uh, Brett Batchelor was asked about his pick last year. So Leave it to Buck to tell someone else <laughs> that they should <laughs> act less, less accomplished. Buck, Jeez. who's over here on Twitter bragging about how he makes more money than Caitlin Clark the other day on Twitter.com. <laughs> oh, no. Pipe down, Buck. Let our producer have his damn moment <laughs> yeah. in the show. If in there the is sun. anyone who, who should not be lecturing people about feeling too accomplished – in something going on in their lives. It is Andrew Rising. <laughs> he said that after being 35 minutes late for prime time. Oh, there what we go. He? Congratulations. Was late for a podcast. I'm telling you. Anyway. You can pull up that on your phone. Well, I'm we can throw you. Buck in the transfer portal, which uh, was a big point of conversation yesterday. 
Yeah. Again, not my best transition. Still not my worst. Uh, I liked this yesterday. 247 Sports does a great job uh, when the transfer portal opens, when there are signing days, and uh, Coach Carl Reed Jr. of 247 Sports was on one of their shows this week and I think had excellent advice for coaches, but perhaps more importantly, parents, about how you fix some of the issues that are popping up now in the transfer portal where guys that just transferred two months ago are now transferring again. This was Carl Reed Jr., uh, 247 Sports. My biggest takeaway is going to be more for the high school player and the high school coach and understanding that recruiting has completely changed in the last five or six years. High school players need to understand, and college coaches need to adjust to this as well. The old conversation of it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision, those things are over. We don't area recruit anymore, so you're not going to have the same coach coming in the same high school all the time. Everybody's position recruiting. The pressure to win is at an all-time high. I talked to a group of kids that were on their way to the Under Armour camp in Nashville last week, and I told them this. You need to find a place where you can go play as fast as you can. Because if you don't play within two years, there's a likely, op- there's a likely chance that the coach is going to ask you to leave. And no matter what the relationship is with your high school coach, no matter what he told your mom and dad during the recruiting process, it's too much pressure for you to win. And if you go and play, your trajectory is going to be like this. But if you go somewhere and you sit on the bench and you don't play, the fall down is going to be really hard. It's going to be hard for your ego. It's going to be hard for your pockets. It's going to be hard on your relationships. And college coaches need to change the way that they have those conversations with high school coaches and with players and say, listen, we're going to be family if you play. But if you don't play well, you have to go. Because those discipline issues that you were talking about earlier, Smoke, only matter to guys that aren't productive. Coach, guys that are productive, those coaches say, it's not that big of a deal, Smoke. We'll be able to work through it. Man, there is a lot of truth there. At Coach Reed Live, uh, where you follow Carl Reed Jr., does a great job covering all these things at 247 Sports. Ramon, I'll just open the floor to you. And when you hear that, how much truth is there in what Coach Reed has to say there? I was standing up on my imaginary table when I heard this last night. I went and followed this page and every doggone thing. It is so, it's so, it's so, it's so, it's so true. It starts in high school. It starts before that. It starts in the 707 collectives that they have. It's so, like, when he said they're recruiting, like, it, you know who recruited me coming out of high school? It was a wide receiver coach. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even see the O-line coach, Coach Jim Ray Stevens, honestly, to my uh, official visit. Wow. That's because they had... They had areas like Pat Washington had West Tennessee, and that I came, I became very familiar with him. I saw Coach Former before I saw my position coach. Is what I'm telling you. So now they're he's saying they're recruiting specifically for positions, meaning I got to see Coach Glenn Ellerby at Tennessee, which also means I need to see if I'm a parent, ask him what's the likelihood of my kid playing. Like it, it really does boil down to that. And this day and age, when it results to how you get found what type of player you will become in college, will they have time to develop you? The the, the term is is dependent upon what type of university you are going to. It's a lot of truth in that. You either need to be Jeremiah T. Lander in year one if you're a marginal guy, meaning a three-star type of dude, right? That's essentially what's happening right now as it pertains to, uh, not Spillman, uh, Herring, right? Elijah Herring. You have a two- Types of guys that came in and you got one that's catapulted to the top and now he's gone. That's the other issue, too, is there sometimes these folks are overpromising and also throwing the NIL in it also. When it all results down to, again, what do we speak about? Even on the pro level, NPF year is trash because he didn't play. Right? We got nothing to look at. And that's why we got so many questions about an individual like him. So as you say, a guy like Peter Skaronsky, even in the NFL, played, you see what he's made of, and, man, we can build off of that. Like, I've said this for a while. I know Ron has too. Savage has also. When it boils down to where you are going in football, basketball, baseball, soccer, tennis, it don't matter. How soon can you get on the court, field, or wherever you're trying to go? I don't care how many championships Georgia wins. You can be a four-star, borderline four-star. You can even be a five-star. If you're not on that field, then what, what good is that star to that coach? Because then you're under you're you're underselling him. 
I thought you was a four star, and I needed to see that talent. Like I know we all, and I've been saying this, and some people probably have said, "Mo, you a hater, man." Like them dudes want to go to Alabama, they want to go to Ohio State, but when there's a log jam, a four deep with four, so with two four stars and a five star in front of you, you're not going to play. You got a year to get on the field and figure something out, and from then it's out. I, it's even that way when y'all don't need, like, I know y'all don't have kids or anything like that, but I'm like, I have kids now. And when even you come down to like the travel ball sports, right? With baseball, like a lot of people want to pigeonhole you into certain positions because it benefits them, the coach. Mm-hmm. Screw those coaches is what I'm telling you. I don't care how big or how national the team is or how many players they're saying are this highly ranked up. If your kid isn't getting reps, parents, I'm telling you, you're wasting your money. I don't care if this team is in the middle of a, of a field. If they're playing ball and or going to the same seven-on-sevens that everybody else is going to, if the talent is there and you're competing against the talent, you're going to be seen. Like, that's legitimately what it boils down to. So so hearing, uh, what's his name again, Well, the coach? Coach uh, Carl Reed Jr. Coach Carl Reed Jr. At tell coach you that. Coach Reed Live on Twitter. Like, when it went, the money is awesome. But here's the thing. You're not getting that $300,000 in one big lump sum anyway. You're going to have to stay and prove that you're worth that per month, as we just heard the, uh, yeah. yesterday from Austin, right? Reps matter. Getting on the field matters. Stop wasting y'all time by chasing the big G, the big T, as far as Tennessee's. Like, there's a, there's a kid I know that wanted to go to a bigger university, but he ended up going somewhere else. Probably a little bit more of a developmental school. And, of course, you want to go to the big-time school. But I had to, you're going to get more out of this coach because he's got more time to develop you. Like, they're competing. They are competing. But you are the type of player that need to go there so they can actually help you develop and eventually get on the field. You might not play until your third year because you need that amount of development. But what you will get is coaching, detail, and somebody that actually believes in the process of developing. That's why we also have these bigger issues in the NFL when it comes down to offensive linemen. A lot of people want him right now, like Amarius Mims. Like, he's been drafted solely on that P-word, potential. How much has he actually played? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of that that goes into place with these types of conversations. I, I advise you, parents, man, these coaches do not care, especially on the youth level. And I, I'm sorry to go off on this tangent like this. No, don't But apologize. there's a lot of truth to it, to what he's saying. Like, these coaches, there's a few that care. But they truly and genuinely do not care. They will throw your kid's arm out. They will expose him and take your money in seven on sevens. They will absolutely parade you all around. And the moment you can't do nothing for them, they're done with you. And then what? who's left in the end is, 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 is you and your kid trying to figure out what's next. But here's also what I'll say, too. The culture of this started, y'all, and I'm not even blaming them, but just the microwave championships. As quick as Urban came in, y'all know I always go there. As quick as Urban came in, as quick as Nick came in to win championships like that, that changed. And you know who also helped speed this up? I'm going to put a little bit of blame on them. It's the money people in college sports. When the boosters involved themselves in saying, you're not good enough for us again, as far as the coaches go, and they started firing coaches and started making decisions, and then they got louder voices as far as the media goes, this also showed the kids that, look, I don't know if the coach going to be here. And then you have resentment on the player side when the coaches leave, but I can't leave. So I can get the selfishness in it. I can get the, you know, self-indulging of trying to get yours too. But the best thing is you may be better off going to UAB than Alabama or Auburn. Um, so when it comes to that specifically, no, I do not have kids, but I do have. And uh, I didn't mean it that no, way. I, I, yeah, and yeah. I'm saying I understand because I have a husband who played uh, college athletics uh, who had a similar situation happen. Obviously, this is back in the day when there was no NIL. But for an example of that, he played baseball. So obviously, he's right down the road from Auburn, huge university, great baseball program at the time. Um knew the coach, was heavily recruited by the coach. He gets there, decides to go instead of, you know, maybe a smaller college where he could develop a little bit more and then transfer to, like, an Auburn. Instead, went straight to Auburn, kind of sat for a while. They put him in some different positions. Then the coach quit. The coach was out in a matter of, like, two years, and Travis was left with the situation where it's like, well, what the heck? So... In, in that situation, he always says now to me, 
on this whole point, I'm making a point here, that he wishes he would have gone to a smaller school and then developed maybe a little bit more or just seen more playing time than even could have went to a major university. And you could look at it the same way as these kids now in college that are possibly looking to go to Ohio State or LSU or, you know, Alabama, where they are going to be probably the third or fourth person underneath the stars. Mm. And maybe they aren't, right? Maybe they're they're recruited there as a five-star and they're on the field right away. But they have to know going in that that's going to be the case. Even if they're making money, like you said, and it's usually what, like a monthly stipend. Yeah. They're going to have to know, like, we might sit and maybe that's not the best for me. The parents need to understand that. Transparency has to be more of a thing when it comes to recruiting. And I know it's different everywhere. And I know some coaches like to do the act. I know some coaches are more upfront about that kind of stuff. But parents also need to be... I think proactive and and maybe asking the tough questions and being like, we want transparent answers. Um, If these parents are going to be more involved and they should be when money now is involved in these young 18 year olds lives. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's the difficult thing is when, when I was recruited, when a a lot of people have been recruited over the last 10 years, you got to ask what the plan is for your personal development. Not the elevator pitch for how you're going to bring this team back to prominence. Not your philosophies and training specifically. What are your plans for me to make me a better player by the time I leave here and a better person? And unfortunately, I think where where Carl Reed Jr. is is really spot on about this is the fact that you no longer have coaches who are scared of burning bridges at high schools they care about. Because when you take away the area recruiting, you are taking away that aspect of, hey, our D-line coach who's been here for five years, he's developed a really good relationship with the head coach at the powerhouse program here in Middle Tennessee. And he's only going to recruit the offensive lineman now because that's the position he coaches. And you got another coach coming in here that he doesn't know our high school head coach from Adam. Mm -hmm. He's just recruiting this wide receiver that's coming in here that he wants now. I do think that's an interesting caveat. And I think when people talk about the transfer portal, they use big, ambiguous phrases that don't have a lot of meaning, right? I feel like conversations like this are the only way that anything in the transfer portal is going to change. Like, get into the specifics of how do you stop kids from having the mentality that they're in a contract year (laughs) as juniors in high school. And then they're going to transfer to another SEC school when the window first opens. And then actually, never mind, they're going to go to an ACC school. Hey, but then actually they're going to go to that ACC school and things were not what they thought. And now they're going to transfer back out. Like it does feel like we are in the middle ground of college athletics between none of this being allowed and all of it being allowed. And at some point there will be guidelines and there will be a salary cap and there will be unions and there will be red tape. But until then, it just feels like high school kids and their parents and the way that those kids and parents are recruited by coaches, that is where you get to the root of this issue. They've but it's bring, interesting. They've been bringing up Arch Manning on the Arch chat here. And, and I thought that was, um, yeah, that's a good example of a really highly recruited quarterback was wanted in a lot of places and has been sitting on the bench for a minute now. We can talk about Arch is way different. Uh, I mean, we're talking about Arch Manning here. Let's His talk situa- about that after the yeah, break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arch is way different. We're talking in about my superstar players in the transfer portal, uh, fixing all the issues we can. And again, like I said, we were not going to have time to cover all of this. No, we just watch. one conversation. So let's continue that conversation coming up next. It's Ramon Foster for Hill of Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Yes, all of those things they service, man. I'm here to tell you also, in the month of April, you can smile and save with Hill of Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. From now until April 30th, take advantage of big savings on whole home, system, whole home systems. Or you can enjoy $1,500 off select new HVAC system, whole home water filtration and descalers, or select new whole home generators. If you've been waiting for the right time to upgrade or, or replace those systems, guess what? 
Now is the time. Stop waiting around. Visit happyhealer.com today for details.
RKW, Ramon, Kayla, and Will is brewed by 8th and Rose on 104.5 The Zone, 615-737-1045. We are fixing the transfer portal before 7 a.m. And coming up at 7 a.m., uh, a kind of NFL spin on this topic. Dan Campbell, head coach of the Detroit Lions, did an interview with Steve Weish of NFL Network, who was on this show last week, had some interesting things to say about culture versus talent. In the NFL draft. We'll get to that coming up in 15 minutes. We're talking before the break about Arch Manning and the way superstar players fit into the transfer portal discussion and how Ramon and Slay and and many of us have said, you got to get on the field as early as you can. Uh, Why are you saying, Ramon, that Arch Manning is a different case? Just look at his last name, period. There's no other way around. Arch has no need for money, has no need to prove anything to you, has no need for any of the things that others come in that position have. That's why he's a case study all by him, about all by his lonesome on that one. Like, and of course, with Quinn Ewers being there, he's played good enough to where Arch can't play right now. There's no need to demote a dude like him. Arch can play one year and still go number one overall because you believe in the talent that his family possess and you believe that he's been taught that. Reputation does precede you sometimes, and that's how it is for a guy like Arch. Again, NIL is not an issue. His family money situation is way different than probably 99.09% of the people on college campuses. His notoriety is different. If Arch wanted to go somewhere, he can start right now. Arch wants to be at Texas. His uncles, I'm sure, and father want him to develop. And it's probably, again, when you – and this is something I'm learning. You do what you want when you have that type of power. If you tell those coaches, I want you to develop him. I want you to take your time with him. Again, parents, you have more power than you think you have sometimes without over-involving yourself. That's one thing. I mostly stand hands-off with my kids. But when it comes down to either workplace stuff or either having a hard conversation with coaches, you have to implement yourself in those conversations so that you get a full understanding of what pathway you want your kids to go, how they're going to go about it, and hold them to those things too, which is why I think Arch will stay there, will learn, will grow, and will pop out probably as a first-year starter Heisman winning trophy quarterback at Texas. I I will ask you this, though. When he was recruited by Texas and he was told, you know, hey – We'll give you this money. So the money part, not a big deal. But, you know, you're going to get this opportunity. Do you believe, though, he was thinking to himself, I'm going to be on the field sooner than what now has played out? Because, again, I'm going to bring up the whole, you said Quinn Ewers, he's playing better than maybe some may have thought and could be a reason also why Arch has not been able to get on the field sooner than later because when it all comes down to it, as much as he has a name, and I agree with you on all that stuff, Arch Manning wants to play and he wants to be a starter, I'm sure, like any other kid who's going to be recruited by any school, but at that level, and especially in Texas, I'm sure he wants to be out on the field playing and wants to be the guy that's leading his team. So that's just my question to you. Was he told that, like, you're going to be playing at a certain time? Or do you think that they kind of went back a little bit on what they told Arch? I think with a guy like Arch, they probably was 100% transparent. Like, the thing about Quinn is this. Quinn didn't do anything to hurt himself. The moment Quinn does have a, a streak of three losing games or three games of multiple interception, I guarantee he gets pulled. That's the thing about it. It's probably more pressure on Quinn than it ever is on Arch because he know he has to perform. Like, they're going to get the best out of Quinn yours because they know the guy behind them is just that good, too. I don't think they lied to a guy like Arch Manning. I just don't see it. I think they said to made, made the starting position go to the best man. And right now, Quinn yours is older. Got to respect that, and it's the best man that's shown it on the field. What do we know about Arch other than what we expect him to do? He's yet to do anything for Texas, if we're being real. So that's why you can't – they have to treat him like a pro, Arch. It's the same thing like I tell my boys when it comes down to how I talk to them about sports. You had a bad game, hey – This is a part of the process. This is how we operate and maneuver through this. You didn't like this team? Well, guess what we have to do? I'm challenging you to be better as a player. Like, those are the conversations I'm sure they've had with Arch. And then either either one of my boys, Kayla, when it comes down to them having bad moments, we're going to talk through this like pros. And I'm sure the same thing is going to happen for a guy like Arch who has two uncles who are pro and a dad that played in college and a grandfather. I mean – 
it'd be idiotic for Arsh not to expect some type of trans, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some type of issues. It, and here's the thing when it comes down to a dude like Arch, right? Or anybody in those type of positions. Same way we're saying Dion treat Travis, Travis Hunter at uh at, at, at a Colorado. It's this. Everybody's treated fairly. Not everybody's treated the same. Right. The same com- the hard conversation that the coaches won't have with other players, they'll have with a guy like Arch because guess what? They expect him to know that. Can he develop still enough when he's not actually playing? Mentally, yeah. Absolutely. You can go through everything. And then on college, you can have two full offenses. I, I just think what happened with Quinn Ewers was as a freshman, he's a, a guy that plays 10 games and completes 58% of his passes when Texas is recruiting Arch Manning and when Arch Manning signs with Texas. I don't think anyone had any clue that Quinn Ewers would become this in 2023 and then come back in 2024. It's almost like if, in a way, to make this localized, you could compare it to the way the Hinton Hooker Joe Milton competition ended up working, right? Mm. I don't think anybody expected Hinton Hooker to be a Heisman candidate a couple of years ago. I don't think that means that Tennessee was dishonest with Joe Milton. It's just the way that those reps were earned on the field. I do think it, it is a pleasant surprise to Texas that Quinn Ewers was on the fringe of being a Heisman candidate in 2023 and put himself as in a scenario to be the guy coming back in 2024. I think that the plan all along was likely for Arch Manning to be the starting quarterback at Texas in 2024. But I mean, there are interesting situation. There were so many years where if your quarterback wasn't a red shirt sophomore in his first year as a starter, you didn't feel good about them stepping in. Heck, I remember when, Jonathan Crompton came in after age. Right. You're like, who? This guy is an Army All American. He better be ready. Hope he's ready, but we have no clue. He right. probably should have sat for a little bit longer. And now we do the opposite. And I don't blame us for it. I mean, Arch Manning's a superstar, but like we make these kids at 18 years old like superstars and then expect them to just walk right in and set the world on fire. Do you think the summer conversation with Arch and his family and Coach Sarkeesian? about Quinn Ewers was mm. or will be, hey, if he's bad, you're in. Mm, you think that right. probably? I, just, I mean, I think, I think so. I would assume so. I would assume so. I think so. that's every position. Mm-hmm. But also, though. it sucks because if Ewers is, is bad, then you bench him, then it's his draft year. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not your job to get Quinn Ewers drafted. It's your job to win football games. If you're Steve Sarkeesian. 615-737-1045. We'll talk about the NFL side of this conversation coming up. Interesting comments this week from Lions head coach Dan Campbell that you'll hear next. Hey, the future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. We're talking about regenerative medicine. And if you are tired of those achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love to do, you need to call QC Kinetics today. So you've got surgery, steroids, drugs, but thankfully these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results, something that we all want. And QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director, Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup. Dr. Scheinkup is a pioneer in this field with over 20 years of clinical work, tons of research, teaching and publishing and he wants you to get relief with a needle not a knife so call qc kinetics for a free consultation today it's easy just dial 615-249-4024 that's 615-249-4024 
So many people trust Two Rivers Ford. Football players, working moms, business owners. Why? Because Two Rivers Ford has been doing business with integrity for decades. Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer. Mortgage professionals in Middle Tennessee. Hi, I'm Chuck McDowell, owner of Wesley Mortgage. I'm a true local, born in Mount Julia, met my wife at MTSU, and I live in Franklin. While every other mortgage company is cutting back, we're rapidly expanding and investing. Are you sick of feeling like an operations employee to ensure your loans are closed on time? When you look around your office, it doesn't look the same. You're missing people. You're missing your friends. Is anyone having fun? We're having fun every day. As the official mortgage provider of the Tennessee Titans, I've personally recruited the top local operations team to ensure your loans are closed on time. So you get paid. So you get to spend time building your business and you get to have fun at work again. Now is the time to join our team, to start a confidential conversation with our local president and COO. Visit whywesley.com, whywesley.com. Seven oh one now seven oh two. What's going on? Good morning from the one oh four five the zone studios. I am Robert Walsh. NBA play in tournament underway. Two games last night as the Lakers ground the Pelicans one ten to one oh six. Pelican star Zion Williamson is believed to have suffered a left hamstring injury last night. Williamson had forty points, eleven rebounds, and five assists before having to leave in the final minutes of crunch time test will be coming later today. Also, the Kings taking down the Warriors 118-94. to Clay Thompson, rough night shooting. 0 of 10 from the field and 0 of 6 from 3. And the Cowboys making another addition in the backfield after adding Ronald Jones earlier in the offseason, signing running back Royce Freeman to a one-year deal. Freeman rushed for 319 yards on 77 carries with two touchdowns last year for the Los Angeles Rams, former third-round pick out of Denver in 2018. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once. You're on for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Seven AM in Nashville as we welcome you in to our number two. Ramon Kayla and Will. RKW is brewed by eighth and rose six one five seven three seven one oh four five is how you jump in. Stream the show live on your smart device, your television, your phone, <laughs> everything in between. It's called one oh four five the Zo TV. Hit the subscribe button while you are there. If you're watching on Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch. Twitch, please. Twitch, please. 
You mind sound it? You could actually understand what I was saying. No, you don't get any. You don't get the opportunity here to, to move the goalposts on who sounds they better. Know, okay? they know, nothing about sounding better. They need to understand me. Yours sounds like like a car running no, by too fast. No, no, no. Well, well, that's be honest. Mine's thing very uh, articulate right and eloquent. No, you know? it was not. Yours sound Which, like you please? were acting. See, look at that. They boo you off a of stage for that. No, that's, that's, they'd be giving me free fruit. This is, tomatoes. That's the reason. <laughs> See, it means they like me, right? Nah, not really. They throw hot uh, tomatoes at you. They really love you, there. You guys ever been to a Renaissance fair? No. I have. Yeah, no, I have not. I went to a, res- a Renaissance restaurant before. Oh, uh, medieval times. Yeah. yeah. Eat with your hands. Uh huh. Love that. Do they have that here? They do. A Renaissance actually. festival. Big time. Yeah. Uh, there was so. one recently. Huge. Someone was just telling me about this. Oh, they have it every year. I I need to go because Lord Lord Burt would be rocking some <laughs> chain mail. <laughs> I'd be riding a hobby horse, get me oh some my. coconuts, the clip clop noise. I think they make. you can see the castle area off of 840. You can. Yeah, off of 840. Stop that. No, it's oh. a real castle. 840 connecting, uh, what, 24 and 40? Yep, it is. Yeah. Oh, it, and wow. that's where they have it. It is. Sound like the super speedway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, see, yeah. I, I sound like a, a, a computer. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm over here. Great. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That but you did, great. you did miss an opportunity, though, to say, I instead of saying I was just thinking about that, you could have said, yeah, I was joust thinking about that the uh, other day. Right. Now, do not knock me for my bleed-out joke today <laughs> and then pull up with that. The, mm. Okay, him, so we have not. Yeah, but, but this was. Come we, on. It was good, though. We have not missed <laughs> our joust? opportunity, guys. We have not missed our opportunity because the 2024 Tennessee Renaissance go. Festival will be open May 4th, 5th, oh. 11th, 12th, 18th, 19th, 25th, Woo. 26th, 27th. I'll, I'll do it. Will, I'll be in appearance. I'll, I'll do be, it as a group of y'all go. want to. Oh, don't play with I'll me. I'll do it. Don't I'll play with me. You going to joust? That'd be fun. RKW live from the Renaissance Fest. Dude. Renaissance Fair. Call me up. Don't I will, you dare tempt me I will pull time. up every medieval translation song have you guys heard like modern songs put into like medieval terms no so nah. it's like i'll i'll bump why it. would i have heard that i'll bump us back <laughs> they've got like rem- hold on y'all, y'all talk <laughs> I'm about so excited. can we dress up you're not going to disparage the name of, of dr Dreath. hold on y'all just do whatever y'all are going to do oh my god dr Dreath. <laughs> this is great i'm excited to hear this <laughs> compilation I, I don't know if i'm excited <laughs> to hear this i'm gonna be real Bert medieval. listens to um, a wide range of things he i does. don't know if i have this ever in my playlist ever even on youtube i don't know it's not on my playlist i'm just familiar with it daryl in the borough in the evident bank chat says i'm pretty sure taylor swift did a music video there i actually do believe that is correct wow because the isn't it love story when she's in a castle yeah i believe that probably was here Did not know. that would make a lot of sense since she did also do a music video at pope prep up in hendersonville was that the same video shoot it may have been uh no no that one was you belong with me Mm, don't ask why i know this Oh, it's because I lived it when I was in high school here. And okay. now he lives it because, you know, Peyton <laughs> yeah. is a very a- and a strong and, That's correct. And we're giving fan. away tickets on this and show right are, here. And yes. yeah, we are, yes. We're giving away a chance to win tickets. Mm. That's an important, <laughs> important Dang clarification. It. I wanted to be like a college coach and lie. Here it is. Ooh. This is still Dre. It's uh, but medieval <laughs> bardcore. You know oh what I mean? Oh, my God. D-R-E. Still. Mm. <laughs> Still, you tell me you're not trying to, to down a flagon of ale listening to this. I, I, I will. I will go to the medieval Fetch me my fest. Mead. Only if I can ride Sire. with you. You can definitely. We go listen to this the whole way. That's, that's my only. That's my only uh, request. We can all eat a turkey leg. A haunch. You got a haunch of leg meat. There. I don't know if they're gonna give you turkey legs. They give you like meat. It's unseasoned as hell. What? Too. You're oh, probably eating a horse. Yeah, mm. like Ooh, we went to the one in Dallas. Leg. It is unseasoned. Don't okay. get me started. That's one of my things. I would eat horse. I want to go to Germany just to try horse. <laughs> you are just full I'm of turn. It looks like life. the biggest steak in the world. It looks like the Fred Flintstone brontosaurus. You're telling me you wouldn't take a little bite of a pony, my little pony? I'd use that as a weapon. No, we're not eating Mr. Ed, Kayla. <laughs> Absolutely not. We're not eating Mr. <laughs> Ed. My little no. pony. We're Mr. not. Ed, you anyway, don't remember that, Mr. Ed? No, I I do at my grandma's house. I Me remember too. saying that. No, we're not eating Mr. Ed, Bert. <laughs> there's there's goats and and sheep that you can eat on before that. Okay, lamb chops. Lambs. Let's start there. Lambs. Uh, Scott on Twitter at Ramon Kayla Will. It's every weekend in May at the Castle in Arrington. Okay. Over in Arrington, Tennessee. 
I've got plans in May. Well, yeah, I that's, do too. It's my birthday month. Let's go, guys. Oh, yeah, plans in May. Uh, Dan Campbell has plans in April to draft a team for the Detroit Lions. He does. He does. I saw his comments. Steve Weish of NFL Network sat down with him this week talking about culture versus talent. Dan Campbell wants the kind of players that will go have a good time with you at a Renaissance Fest. There's no way I can make this a seamless transition. <laughs> you have left me nothing to work You're with. You're there. You're almost you there. You have given me two-star topics, and I'm trying to make a five-star transition, <laughs> and I'm going to get fired. Dan Campbell, the horse. <laughs> <laughs> he got a horse chin. Uh, this was Dan Campbell with Steve Weish of NFL Network wanting good people, maybe over good players sometimes. Detroit Lions head coach Dan Campbell on NFL Network. Yeah, and for the most part, they have done that, right? And I think they do have an outstanding setup when it comes to being able to dive into not only tape, but everything that comes along with the draft process. I think they do do a really good job at that. And we've seen the fruits of the labor pay off for most of that. And look, you always want to have a good culture. And again, you could probably say, while it did kind of get a little rocky in terms of the winning here in Tennessee, the culture was always good inside that locker room. I was in the locker room every day. Like, even during the losing times when you'd be a little down, you didn't have players getting into trouble for the most part, um, besides Isaiah Wilson, which is a story within its own. But every organization, too, is going to have its its issues, right? Like, they had five players suspended for gambling, uh, under the Detroit Lions. Is that a culture thing? Not really. You know, I mean, that's been kind of a, a hot button issue in terms of what's really been told to these athletes. I mean, MPF went through that. I don't think he's a bad kid. Um, but so overall, I think they have done a really good job from top to bottom at knowing what they want and then being able to then execute with what they have. And I think sometimes not taking that really, really good guy because he could have a characteristic issue. Sometimes you gamble and it works. It doesn't seem like they want to be that type of team that does that, though. Which, I'm just tired of the word culture. I am. I think Dan Campbell is genuine in his comments, and it's not a criticism of him. But on the other side of the coin, the Chiefs signed Kadarius Tony and immediately won a Super Bowl. And you can't tell me that guy is a, a team before me kind of guy. So what's the balance between finding talented players but also not implementing a culture that makes it to where you can't sign talented players, right? Because that's been the conversation here. How many good players are you missing out on? Because you're telling your wide receivers they have to block every every snap. That was, that was exactly my point I was going to make is this. I'm with Dan Campbell to a point, to a point. I and think I think he's, he's right. right. Absolutely. Yeah, but talent does have to show too. What, what I do like about – Again, this conversation, what Kayla said and about Dan Campbell is like, at least that's a specific definition of culture. Mm. I think Dan Campbell is one of the few coaches who actually, when he says culture, explains what he specifically means in his locker room most of the time. I just hate when culture is just this ambiguous term that's just thrown out there of like, well, we just want a good culture. Like, nah, I just want good football players. Like, I just feel like it's a cop-out answer for teams that don't sign good football players sometimes. Well, we were just worried about culture. <laughs> Why don't you worry about winning? 
Yeah. And I think both is important, too, because I think, you know, you look at your locker room for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and while there's always issues in locker rooms, there's always going to be things that pop up. I think they've done a really good job, Mike Tomlin specifically, at being able 100%. to let them kind of police themselves in situations, work it out for themselves, and be able to to kind of push those issues to the side um, and still win for the most part. I think that's a really good example who – somebody who's done it really well and you could look at him and I'd always think oh, the culture's pretty good in Pittsburgh from an outsider of course yeah oh I thought we was going to break well, wait we're, we're about to but okay yes. yeah yeah well I can address it after yeah. it's like I said it's uh to me I'm, I'm with the culture thing but one thing you better do with culture is find talent I know this is always the conversation around this time of the year we, we want football players first like, guys that actually love playing football. Because there's a lot of people that are good at football or do football. That's why I always say do sports in general. Don't just do sports. If you in it, I, this is violence right here, I'm going to choose. But step on the freaking neck every chance you get. That's where I'm at with this type of stuff. Like, culture's fine. I'm with y'all. Locker, oh, we love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. Go win us some games. Do you like lifting? Do you like mm-hmm. running? Do you like making plays? Do you like the aches and pains and the heartbreak of it all, too? Go find me some dudes that want to do those things. I think Dan Campbell's was getting to that, but it's also the the understanding that, look, you can't do any of that if you don't have the talent, the pieces around you. Like, I think Isaiah l- like liked football. You know what I'm saying? Do you absolutely love football and the grind and the pains and the hurt and the surgeries and the concussions and everything else that comes along with it? Like, the idea of you got to throw your face into the fan to go make a play for your teammates – are you willing to do that week in and week out? Are you willing to take a sacrifice fly to get uh to go 0 and 1 on the day? Like or 0 for 3 on the day? Those are the types of things you look for when you, when you have these top 30 conversations with these prospects and when you're recruiting them too. Y'all got me started this morning. <laughs> 615-737-1045 is our number uh along the lines as far as it pertains to building a championship roster. Daniel Jeremiah of NFL Network, who was on the show last week, has a great formula on how you build a championship roster in the NFL. How far away are the Titans? We'll talk about that next. What's going on? It's Will Bowling, and springtime is officially here. That's right. Weather in the 80s this week. And as it begins to warm up, Lee Company has your back to make sure your home's air conditioning is working efficiently. The best time to take care of this is when in the mornings it's still 50s, 60s. You're not up to 90s yet. And uh, let's face it, we're going to be there very soon here in Middle Tennessee. Let one of Lee Company's expert technicians perform a 22 point inspection as well as seasonal cleaning and maintenance to help you stay ahead of the changing weather. And thanks to their visual findings platform, their professional team virtually shows you exactly what they see. In addition to updates and information on your unit's efficiency, cross this one off your spring to-do list by giving Lee company a call 615-567-1000 or go to leecompany.com slash promotions to get $20 off your air conditioning tune up today. That's 615-567-1000 or online at LeeCompany.com. That's Lee Company. All you need.
Wednesday morning on Ramon, Kayla, and Will is brewed by 8th and Roast. RKW, Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling. There you go. There's your keyword for your chance to win Taylor Swift tickets. Chance to win. Look at, look at Ron Slay out here in the, in the morning. That's what I'm talking about early. Getting yeah. us going. 615-737-1045 is our number. NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah for the last three years has had a formula to build a championship roster. Ramon, you mentioned this yesterday in the first hour of the show about how we need to have a bigger discussion of how you build a championship team. What is the DNA of a Super Bowl contender? Well, here's the formula. You need a quarterback, three offensive playmakers, three quality offensive linemen, two pass rushers, three defensive playmakers. How far away are the Titans from having that? How far away? It depends on what you get out of them in a fragile year for a few guys. Depending on if D-Hop can repeat, right? Depending on if Pollard can be a guy that is a playmaker that you think he is or was in Dallas. Um, The bigger issue that I have is the pass rusher. I do. It's easier to double team Big Jeff in situation, unless, of course, Nard Wilson scheme up stuff to get him home. Uh, Harold got hot later in the season uh, last year as far as him getting after the quarterback. I think they're probably halfway there, Will, to answer your question. I think they're halfway there. And the only reason I'm saying halfway right now is because I don't know what this version of Brian Callahan's team is going to look like with these specific players. I think it's. I I agree with you on the halfway, but I think what's hard to really tell because you could even say, I don't know if they're even halfway yet because when it comes down to it, the biggest part of that formula, the most important part of that formula is the quarterback. And whether or not you believe in Will Levis out there or whatever it might be, we still have not seen Will Levis at that level of, okay, he is a Patrick Mahomes. And nobody can has proven to get to that level. But I'm even saying just a guy that is going to get you to the playoffs. He hasn't been able to do that yet because last year was his first year and he stepped in for Ryan Tannehill. Mm-hmm. And this is the year that they're able to now surround him because they have money with some of these other guys, like playmakers on the outside, like a defense, right, that you add to the back end with a, a caliber guy that is part of this formula. But the biggest part of it is the quarterback. And unfortunately, we can't really make any solid predictions until we see the progression of Will Levis this next season. And then maybe I can say, okay, if he is what he is supposed to be, what they hope he is, I think that they can be more than halfway. Yeah. So the example of this from Daniel Jeremiah of NFL Network that he put out on Twitter a couple of months ago was the Miami Dolphins moving forward into this offseason. So Tua Tungavailoa at quarterback, the three offensive playmakers you have, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, and either Devon A. Chan or Raheem Mostert. Done. Three offensive playmakers. I don't think there's any questions about that. Quality offensive linemen. You need three quality offensive linemen, he says. Austin Jackson, Teron Armstead, and question mark because they've got some holes there on their offensive line. However, the scheme of the way Miami plays offense masks deficiencies on the offensive line because Tua Tungavailoa gets the ball out of his hands lightning fast. So you can afford to invest extra if you're Miami based on your scheme into your playmakers versus your offensive line. Defensively, two pass rushers, Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb, pretty good, Mm -hmm. certainly. Uh, and he uses four different criteria to evaluate these players. Blue chip, good, age slash injury slash contract concerns, and unproven slash young. Uh, those are two pass rushers. One who is uh, some injury concerns with Bradley Chubb and one who is good in Jalen Phillips. Defensive playmakers, needing three of them. You got options in Miami. Javon Holland, Jalen Ramsey, who needs no introduction. And then your third one with age and injury concerns between Jerome Baker, Xavier Howard, and David Long Jr. I would say the way David Long Jr. played last season, he's in the good category as far as defensive playmakers go. So let's go through this with the Titans then. Quarterback, again, blue chip, good, 
unproven or age slash injury concerns. Will Levis, age. easily young and unproven. Yep, for young sure. Unproven. Young and unproven. Three offensive playmakers. DeAndre Hopkins, I still think, is blue chip level at the offensive playmaker position. Until proven otherwise, from, uh, definitely based on what he based did last, last year and this offense that he had to play in, I think you got to tip your hat to him. Yeah. He may be fringing it, but it's definitely there still. Mm-hmm. Calvin Ridley, a second offensive playmaker. Yeah. I think you put him in the good category. But I'd almost put him almost near blue chip. I don't think so. Blue. I, I almost so. put him near blue also. He's only done it for one year after the long hiatus from playing football. He, i got to see it again. Yeah, we, we'll revisit and see if he takes it to that level. So if he's wide receiver one, he should be. Mm-hmm. I'll just he say that. He should be. be. He's a good player. Yeah. He's a very good player. I think he's in the good category. I think blue chip is reserved for the top 10 players at a position. And I don't think Calvin Ridley is a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL right now. It's not a dig on him. There are just a lot of outstanding wide receivers yeah. in this league right now. He can move up. I think you can make the argument Hopkins is still a top 10 receiver in the NFL right now. Uh, I'm I'm saying French. I'm saying he's blue chip, but I'm saying top 10. I don't know. Yeah. Third offensive playmaker, Tony Pollard slash Tajay Spears. I put him in good. Yeah, that's definitely good. I say Pollard, I'd put Pollard in good and, and Spears in unproven. Still. Yeah. I think coming off of his rookie year, he sure showed us he could he could be that player that is good. Um, but you got to be able to, especially your sophomore year, yeah. take it to another level. Yeah. Three quality offensive linemen. Uh oh, I'm so glad that one was <laughs> so true. I've been saying it for like the last two, you three years. You have been saying for mm. years, just give me three good ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You. And you and Daniel did not compare notes on this. Like, no. this was new to you yesterday when we spoke about this off air that we were going to have this conversation. You said, just give me three good ones. Just give me three good ones. And some fighters. That's what you need. Sure. Lloyd Cushenberry, as far as centers go, is a blue chip talent. As far as offensive linemen go, he's probably good. But he has not played a snap in a Tennessee Titans uniform yet. So. As many times as you sign an offensive lineman in free agency and that guy isn't good, I need I need to see it. I Titans with that. Jersey. I roll with that. Mm-hmm. Peter Skronsky, unproven. Yep. And I don't know who your third quality offensive lineman is. And <laughs> MPF Raidens, what? Unproven. <laughs> unproven. All unproven. of them. Unproven. I mean, Raidens is the one I listed next yeah. as most next uh, next most likely to start. Maybe it should be Brunskill. At and, right guard, though. And that's old injury concerns. But still, yeah, still you know? unproven yeah. in a sense. Like, So, yeah, you got one in a possible with Peter. Oof, not but enough. But Peter's still young. So you're still three and a half away from having a solid offensive line. But in this scenario, too, it does show that for 2024, for building a competitive roster, the Titans certainly have a bigger need on the offensive line as far as the quality offensive linemen you need to be competitive more so than they need another offensive playmaker. They've got the offensive playmakers that you need to win a championship. Mm-hmm. They are on the way to getting that in 2024. Again, you don't draft just for 2024, but as far as building a roster right now, you've got that. Uh, defensively, two pass rushers. Jeffrey Simmons is blue chip. There's no question about it. 100%. Harold Landry, oh, yeah. age slash injury concerns. I agree with that. Can Harold do it again? Can he go double digits again? That's that's the big, like, how consistent can you have him? And not just, and I know the, the season ramps up, but if Harold can jump out and stay consistent, even if he had a lull in the middle of the season, if you tell me Harold by week, week seven's got six and a half sacks, seven sacks. Oh, man. Oh, we're I'd cooking. set him for that. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tomorrow, yeah. And then even, even if he had missed three games without that type of production, I'll live with that because I expect him to ramp back up again. I don't want a slow start and then uh, increase at the end of the season when we're playing catch up in those situations. And look, Harold Landry, we can use the the kind of excuse of coming off the ACL. A lot of guys in their your year coming out of an ACL injury, they're not their best. And that, I think there is facts to that. Absolutely, he did gain some momentum at the end of the season. I think he finally got into his own at the end of the season. But again, that's fine and dandy. But this is a whole new year, and you need major production. You need to go back to when he had the year that then he got his contract because 100%. that's the production you need. 
Defensive playmakers, if you need three of them, according to NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah. Legereus Sneed, I think, is a blue chip talent at corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shadobe Awuzie, good at the cornerback position. And then blank. There are only two spots of this formula where we just don't even have a person to put in. That is defensive playmaker and offensive line. And offensive line. And those are biggies. Yeah. And you already have two defensive playmakers you've added. The Titans at the linebacker position need a playmaker. Now. Yes, ASAP do. is possible. And whether that is drafting someone on day three, that Frank Bush, the inside linebackers coach, and the guru of that position can mold into a playmaker. As I look at this, guys, I think defensive playmaker is 1B as far as Titans needs behind one more quality offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. And just smash in the f and Bank chat says, you're forgetting Amani Hooker. Well, here's the deal with Amani Hooker. Has he been good for this team? Yes, he, he's made plays. Like, he's he's been a playmaker in certain situations. The problem with Amani has been availability. And I know it doesn't seem like he's missed a ton of games, guys. He's missed. He's missed games. In the last three years, he's been off and on the field. And he's only getting older. And I'm not saying he's not a playmaker, but that's one of those that you have to start pushing towards the more, okay, age, injury. Yeah, definitely. And and the thing with Imani is this. Like you say, he's out there. Injuries do creep up as far as his, you know, as far as his been this year. But he'll come out of games or have something happen. So it's, right. it's this consistency of it for a guy like him. And just the playmaking styles of his also to where you got to see more of it, like mm -hmm. those splash plays. And he's made those. But, of course, when you're talking about consistently having a dude, if you compare it to what – Miami has on, on, on their defensive side of the ball, of course, Javon Holland, Holland and Jalen Ramsey. And you throw Bradley Chubb in there. You also throw Xavier Howard, Jerome Baker, David, David Long, Jr. Long. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you have those types of guys. So for comparison's sake then, for the questions we get, and we get a lot of calls about why are y'all just anointing the Texans? Why is it just assumed that the Texans are going to be that team? If you look on the formula of a championship roster with what we just did, Houston Texans, quarterback, C.J. Stroud, blue chip talent. Yep. I'm ready to say that right now about him. If you need three offensive playmakers for the Houston Texans, uh, take your pick. You want Joe Mixon, Stephon Diggs, and Nico Collins? You want Tank Dell, Nico Collins, and John Mechie? You want Dalton Schultz, Joe Mixon, and Stephon Diggs? Mm. Three Prove offensive it. playmakers, Nico Collins, good. Stephon Diggs, blue chip. Tank Dell, good. Good. Dalton Schultz, good. Joe Mixon, good. So there you go. On the offensive line, three good offensive linemen. Laramie Tunzel, blue chip talent at left tackle. Offensive line does get a little tricky for them. Right you have tackle Shaq for Mason them. at right guard, who is, uh, I would say, injury or age concerns at this point. 31 oh. going into this season. Then a right tackle is a pro bowler, also second contract guy who's a high first rounder too. Titus Howard, who wasn't great last year. No. But for the sake of argument, let's say... You know, he's unproven. You feel better right about tackle. him than your situation. Oh, uh, well, 100%. Yeah. And I think the center's nice. 100%. Too. Yeah. Two pass rushers. Uh, how about Will Anderson Jr. and Daniil Hunter? And that's not even beginning to mention Danico Autry, who's on the Houston Texans defense. And they also signed back Barnett. And then three defensive playmakers. How about Derek Stingley Jr. Uh, at safety, Jimmy Ward or Jalen Petrie? Take your pick there. And Aziz Al Shire. Uh, Derek Stingley Jr. is a legitimate corner in this league. Like, so really good. we use this exercise to say that is how far away the Titans are from having a championship roster. There are no holes. There are no question marks other than maybe one quality offensive lineman for Houston right maybe now. Maybe one. But then you throw Shaq Mason in there in their center. Like, they, they have the pieces in place. It ain't crowning them because they got to go win. And, it, and CJ has to be good. Like, yeah, he, he can't – CJ can't take a dip in his sophomore season – I don't think he will. I don't – a lot of people are saying in the chat, like, oh, but what about Trevor Lawrence? Like, he, you know, wasn't what he was supposed to be. Everybody anointed Jacksonville last year, the winners of the AFC South, and they were going to make a big playoff push, and then they weren't that. Yeah. And I think some people may be thinking, hey, we're jumping on the, the, the Houston Texans bandwagon a little too soon. And look, they could take steps back be, because CJ takes a step back, but – I just feel like CJ is just a different type of quarterback than than Trevor Lawrence. You know who you didn't mention as far as their offensive line? 
young, it was the first or second round talent, Kenyon Green. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he's been a bit inconsistent. Yeah. But yes, Texas A&M product, Kenyon Green. I know. Been on and off the field. 615-737-1045 is our number. Uh, yesterday, the National Football League announced an interesting partnership that has us thinking about the best and worst versions of things that are all across your neighborhood coming up next.
RKW Ramon, Kayla, and Will is brewed by Eighth and Rose on 1045 The Zone, 615 737 1045, the number. Coming up in 15 minutes, two NFL analysts did a joint mock draft together, and they made a pick for the Tennessee Titans that nobody is talking about. That's next at 8 o'clock, 615 737 1045. Trey Smith going to stop by. Yes. Two time Super Bowl champion guard for the Kansas City Chiefs at 820. Guys, if you want to eat good in the neighborhood, you can now do that at the official bar and restaurant of the National Football League. Did you see this yesterday that the NFL has announced that Applebee's has entered into a multi year partnership as the official bar and grill of the NFL? So big time to me. Take me back to college, okay? Take me back to high school, man. <laughs> that is man. awesome right there. Applebee's, who knew they were out here spending, On marketing, a night? spending right? mark, marketing money like this? You can get your Monday Night Football with a side of Bourbon Street steak. And also the, the, the uh, appetizer platter. Those platters get me. Those will get me every time. I can count on one hand the amount of times I have been to Applebee's. Really? But it begs the question, what is your best restaurant chain that you have given your business the most? Give it, uh, Jimmy John's. Ooh. Jimmy John's. I was thinking more sit-down restaurants, oh, like sit down dinner restaurant? places, but I'll, I'll allow that. It, it, it'd probably be Applebee's, just being real really? with you. Yeah, Applebee's is the stuff. I'm telling you, man, it's cool. You know what you're getting yourself into when you walk in there. If you want drinks, they got really good drinks. They're going to hit you with a look. You can get an appetizer, dinner, and dessert and a drink for like 25 bucks. Now, that may be a little bit more, but in college, man, those wing half-off appetizers, half-off appetizers with the spin dip, too? What are we talking about? <laughs> like, that is survival 101 right there. Half off appetizer at a sit down restaurant in the neighborhood like Applebee's. I'm proud of them for not going away with so many national chains just leaving this world. Applebee's out here trying to be the they no, they are the official restaurant of the NFL. Man, salute them. This is I just a hand clap, man. They survived. A very easy answer to this question. Oh, Charlie's Mm. forever. It has been O Charlie's. When I was growing up, they had the pretzel crunch chicken tenders. You get that thing with a couple of honey mustards that they have. They're honey mustard. God. Excellent. <laughs> the rolls, you just go ahead. Hey, just go, go ahead and throw me a couple of those extra butters for these rolls, please, when you bring them back next time. Bye. Thank right. you so much. Free pie Wednesday. Are you kidding? I never had free pie They're Wednesday. They're also based in Nashville, too, like it, it based in Middle Tennessee. So I feel like O Charlie's also a big Middle Tennessee yeah. thing growing up. You also, at one point, had the Jeff Fisher show that was at the O'Charlies in Brentwood, but that's neither here nor there. What? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, man. The O'Charlies <laughs> in Brentwood off Old Hickory. That that place, I might as well have owned stock yeah. in that place. After a high school football game, all right, we go to O'Charlies. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Them and Chili's. And they were, they were side by side as well on Old Hickory and Brentwood. It's so funny. As a kid, I think that's where I really did a lot of chain restaurants in terms of I think Red Robin was a spot I always was at as a kid. And I'm talking like high school, college. Um, Applebee's was more high school, I think. But uh, Olive Garden, like. Olive Garden. Man, that was one. And they don't even have it back in my hometown anymore. And I was devastated to learn that, you know, because going there and eating that salad and breadstick, I think it was like all you can eat at that point. Nowadays, I don't feel like I hit up as many chain restaurants because I cook a lot. Yeah. But Cheesecake Factory is always like Ugh. just for me one of the best because Bougie. I just know I can get anything. Yeah, right. That's Any kind true. of uh feeling I'm having in my gut that day, the menu will provide me with it. Yeah. It will. Uh Tim in the F and Bank chat is correct when he says that O'Charlie's and Brentwood is now no longer there. Yes. Oh, my really? Heart. I learned yesterday, by the way, on Twitter too, that apparently our friend Brian Rice, like has an intense hatred for Olive Garden. It's really? interesting you bring that up. Yeah, I had a buddy of mine text me, former offensive lineman, but you never former said, as an offensive <laughs> oh lineman, God. you never former, okay? As an offensive lineman, you got to go with Applebee's with the all-you-can-eat riblets, okay? No Ooh. way they didn't make a whole lot of money off of you us. Eat I'm telling you, they just had deals for survivors. Bert, <laughs> as our, uh, it, you are a food connoisseur. I feel like you're going to have a good answer mm-hmm. on this. Robert Walsh. 
Sorry, I was discussing uh, important business back here. What are we okay. discussing? Yeah. Is it the bankruptcy book your, of... Book your Renaissance Fair tickets later. Uh, we're talking about <laughs> best so chain excited. restaurants. Uh, well, my favorite chain restaurant is uh, Going Under. I don't know if you guys saw Bloomberg report today that Red Lobster is filing <gasps> for bankruptcy. Are they? What? If Buff would have ordered last week, <laughs> he could have helped them. He could have put them over the edge. You know, I've never once been to Red Lobster. Really? That's I've crazy. Been a couple times. There, just, there just wasn't one around us growing up. There's one right off of Mallory in Williamson County. Yeah, there is, isn't there? Yeah. You never went. You probably, know, you probably didn't go. I'm not way. anti. I would go. I, I mean, I don't even eat the lobster there. You know I what know. I mean? The like, biscuits. I just get, you can get a shrimp scampi. You can yeah. get, uh, the, the biscuits are good. Really cold water. <laughs> really cold water. <laughs> really cold water. Hey, Water's I'm, good. I'm 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 just here to say me and me and my partner Kevin we are proud of 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 Applebee's. That's what I'm telling. <laughs> we the we NFL are proud. Sponsor, I mean so. they did the same thing for Little Caesars. Little Caesars. Little Caesars took the off. They are big time now. Look at the NFL. You need a lifeline. Call the NFL. Call the Shield. Yeah. Call yeah. the Shield. Coming up, two NFL analysts did a dueling mock draft together, and they took a player that nobody else is mocking to be a Tennessee Titan. We'll tell you who it is next. Nashville is such a great place to live. We've got great sports, great entertainment, great restaurants we were just talking about. And we also have one of the top volume Ford dealers in the country right here in Middle Tennessee. That's Two Rivers Ford. If you haven't checked out Two Rivers Ford lately, they've pretty much got something for everyone. If you're a business owner, Two Rivers Ford has a commercial fleet division, an entire team dedicated to getting your work trucks and vans for the best price and the best financing. And they deliver what you need quickly because they know time is money. And did you know that Two Rivers Ford also has a mobile experience division? Yes. It's 2024 and everything comes right to you. Well, Two Rivers Ford comes to you also. If you need maintenance on your vehicle, they'll perform basic maintenance like oil changes and new brakes right at your home or the office. Or you can schedule a pickup and delivery service where Two Rivers Ford will come pick up your vehicle, leave you alone, service your vehicle, and bring it back when it's ready. And guess what all these mobile service options are? They're the exact same price you pay at the dealership. And when it comes to purchasing a vehicle, Two Rivers Ford has a team of experts for every type of vehicle. They have an electric vehicle and hybrid experts, Bronco experts, work truck experts. You're always in excellent hands with Two Rivers Ford sales team. And in case you did not know, the sales team at Two Rivers Ford doesn't work on commission. They're there to service you, answer your questions, bring a vehicle to your home or office to test drive, whatever you need. They just want to make your experience the best it can be. There's a reason Two Rivers Ford has been around for over four decades. Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer.
What's going on? 8 o'clock. Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. NBA play-in tournament underway. Two games last night. Lakers grounded the Pelicans 110-106. to Pelicans star Zion Williamson is believed to have suffered a left hamstring injury last night. Had 40 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists before having to leave the game in the final minutes of crunch time. T will get some tests later today. Also, the Kings take down the Warriors 118-94. to Clay Thompson, rough night shooting uh, 0 of 10 from the field 0 of 6 from 3 and the Cowboys making another addition to their backfield uh, after adding Ronald Jones earlier in the offseason signing running back Royce Freeman to a one-year deal Freeman had 319 yards on 77 carries with two touchdowns last year for the Los Angeles Rams he was a third round pick in Denver in 2018 for all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs visit USSTN.com breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols this is 1045 the zone Second half of the show, our number three starts right now at Ramon, Kayla, and Will. RKW is brewed up by eighth and roast. VFL, two-time Super Bowl champion Trey Smith joins us coming up in 20 minutes. We'll talk draft with Rhett Bryan at 9 o'clock this morning before Inky Johnson sends us home with some midweek motivation at the end of the program here on a Wednesday morning. 615-737-1045 is how you jump in. You watch the show on your smart device. That's Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, please. please. You're supposed to, you you can say the Twitch please still. It's just, Mm. Mm -mm. just got to come at a different time. Uh, uh -uh. I'm I'm here to just beat Twitch please. I won. (laughs) You're just going to take that dub? That's not okay. Anything he can get. All right, you can get me back, and I'll tell you exactly how you can get me back. May 18th. Renaissance Fair. There Renaissance you go. Fair. Come dressed as Ramon the Swashbuckling Pirate. Let's I cannot go. wait. Uh, you think I'm playing. If Maybe. I can make that, I'm there. I know you ain't playing. Yeah. If I was going to pillage with anyone, I'd want to pillage with you. We, I mean, we did on Saturday night. That was fun. We stole, it was fun. We, Just, we, get, we weren't allowed to bring the booty back. You know what I mean? If, if we're pirates, we can actually bring the booty back. <laughs> Well, technically, you had Cheyenne with you, so right? Uh, <laughs> By the way, happy birthday to Cheyenne. Oh, it's her birthday today. It is her birthday. Hey, happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. Did yeah. you get her that thing? Birthday no, I don't really care. to him. I don't care. <laughs> I don't. Good luck. At living with me. Hey, he her, does care. Hey, to her snitches that are reporting back to her, go tell her that, okay? Yeah, she run gotta... and tell her that. Oh, you can't talk to her today. She off work today. She getting uh, pampered today. Oh, did she get her Bert. gift? She did get her gift. How'd she like it? Uh, I don't know. She's getting it at in about an hour and a half. Oh, okay. So uh, okay. we'll see how shiny that face is and how massaged that back is, mm-hmm. I reckon. Ramon requested that specific place. Bert. <laughs> You just talked about massages and used the word "reckon" in the same sentence, and I don't I think reckon. that happened. I don't think that happens very often. Shiny face and rubbed back. She getting a massage and a facial, man. That's what I do. Wait, you got her facial too? Yeah, I do. I'm telling My you, God, when Big Bert pull up, penny. you need to bang out the Brinks because Big Bert, Big Bert don't pull up. Big Bert Brinks. Back Big that Brinks up. <laughs> Big Bert come up and pull out the bag. Girl, you look good. Big Would you back the Brinks Bert. up? Brinks. Where did we find Bert? Like, legit, where do we find you? And I'm here for it, okay? I don't ever, don't ever change. Good for I don't you. even know where we go. Good for we you. Happy birthday, Cheyenne, breath. man. Again, I'm always to celebrate birthday. Happy birthday, yeah. Cheyenne. What's awesome. she, 22? Tw- yes, something like that. Okay. Right, I'm robbing the cradle. I don't mm-hmm. know about you. Anyway. ESPN's <laughs> Field Yates and NFL Network's Peter Schrager did a dueling mock draft together and they have the Tennessee Titans trading I did not know the specifics of the trade itself but they have the Titans actually trading with the New Orleans Saints who in this scenario want to move up the number seven to select 
LSU's Malik Neighbors. Okay. I, I, I like and hate that for New Orleans because, again, I, I love the hometown stuff because we'd love to have Trey here. I get that. If there is one fan base that is most similar between a college team and an NFL team, it is the LSU fan base and the Saints fan base. Those are the sure. same individuals. The same people. Mm -hmm. There is no other NFL fan base that is more of a one-to-one comparison to a college the way LSU and the Saints overlap. Anyway. And, and dude, by the way, they need some. They need something over there to, to cheaper spark, help is what yeah, they cheaper need. Cheaper help <laughs> and to spark yeah. some sort of excitement in that organization. Coach. Dennis Allen is not Oof. the guy, in my humble opinion. He looks like he could do taxes though. Be a hell of sure. a tax doer. Sure. Yeah. It's the kind of guy you were just reaching out to like last week to do yeah. your taxes for. Tax day was on Dennis Monday. Allen. So, this is a very fascinating co collaborative draft that they have going on. I mean, the Titans moving back to 14 to get Tali Fuaga. There I think go. that's super interesting. Tali Fuaga yes. is, the, is the guy they have the Titans taking, who I have not seen anyone else mock to the Titans other than PFF Sam Monson, who actually did the same thing the other day. Uh, but it's also setting it up as far as a trade to pick at 14. Um, if, if it pertains to you taking a, a right tackle, and I believe Tali Fuaga is a right tackle, unless he moves over again. Our conversation with him at the Senior Bowl, he was adamant, I will play left, but mostly all you've oh, played has been right. Oh, he did say that at the oh, Senior Bowl. Oh, heck yes. Yeah, okay. He was, I'm talking about strongly okay. Kayla suggesting, no, nah, I'll play left. And of course, most young guys believe they can do anything anyway, but as far as team's perspective, it may be good for a guy like him in year one, especially if you don't believe in NPF, mm -hmm. to put him at right tackle. But then what do you do about left? You know, so I think at some point we're probably going to have to lay our head on the shoulders of NPF, depending on what happens if they do trade, right, and move back. And you draft the right tackle. You move them over to the left, vice versa. If you get Joe Alt, then unless you go on second-round tackle, you're probably going to have to end up laying your head on his shoulder at some point too. This will be a fascinating shuffle. I can't wait to see what the first week looked like post-draft of OTAs when the rookies show up, Kayla. Uh, that's that's going to be very uh, interesting in how the first line look. And that's not the last line right. as far as the uh, depth chart goes, but it, it will give you answer into initially what they're thinking could be their potential starters going into this 24 season. And we just went over, you know, the, the list of – offensive lineman and and who is a blue chip and really there's probably just one in Lloyd Cushenberry in that center position all all the others there's a lot of unproven there and this is a situation even if you draft a guy um you still in their first year you're gonna have to get production out of them no matter if it's Joe all or Tali Fawaga and what's interesting about this trade is yeah he is primarily a right tackle I've even seen some scouts say you know he could be a guard uh, in yeah, some situations. Yeah, yeah, right, and right, yeah. so I, I think if Bill Callahan sees something, and look, he has done it before, specifically with the Browns, where he's had a right a right tackle guy and he's converted into a, a left tackle. Now, success rate, it, it's not always there. If, if Bill Callahan sees how I can do this with this player, maybe they decide to do something like this. But this, to me, is a little bit of a reach unless you really think we're just going to start him at right tackle and we'll figure out left. I just don't think that makes a lot of sense. It, it's, it's yeah, it, it'll be fascinating to see. I actually just wrote down a question similar to that for Trey. Um, it's fascinating, though, too. If this is right if and what they're projecting, it's one pick I do like of this because it fits their team and what they need. And that's on this Peter Strager, Phil Yates uh, mock draft is this. Number nine, Troy Fatano out of uh, Washington. Yep. I've I've called him myself as a left tackle. Some think yep. he can move into guard. But we had the conversation about Darnell Wright, him playing right tackle. Why would you move him when you have a really good rookie year? And Troy, to me, is I think is a really good left tackle. I do. I think he can play it. Some want to move him in because of arms or whatever the case may be. But when you're trying to build a team, sometimes you break the mold of what others think you're supposed to do. And if they did pick a guy like Troy Fatano, who to honestly is behind, he's in front of at this point, Joe Alt, uh, J.C. Latham, and Tali Fawaga, and Olu Fashionu. I, I don't know if you're going to reach that high. Draft? In this mock, I don't know if you're going to reach that high for Troy Fatano. Wow. But if you're breaking the mold and saying, hey, he fits what we're trying to build as a team, then that's a strong build of, 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 of belief in, in Troy. Wow. When you watch a player at the offensive line spot and say he is a right tackle, and not a left tackle. What 
characteristics separate a right tackle and a left tackle? Style, first and foremost. Uh, look at Darnell, right? Look at the way Darnell Wright. Darnell Wright, former Darnell Tennessee Wright. right tackle, now Chicago Bear. Uh, big, big body guys, strong run game protectors. I think good footwork, not great footwork as it compares to the left tackle position. Um, that's the separator for me. I think the left tackle should be an athletic build guy that moves well in space, light on his feet, good with his hand, hips as fluid as ever. I think Darnell has good hips, somewhat can be stiff in a sense, but when it comes down to running the ball, you never deny the right tackle. Again, the passing protection of the right tackle has to has increased over the years because guys are now rushing over the right tackle more than they ever have. So you have to have the ability to uh, have to have the ability to also pass protect good on the right side. I just think you're more primarily run and okay. then pass on the right side. I'll give it to you right now. Look at Joe Alt and J.C. Latham. Two different types of body styles, right? Look at Joe Alt and also uh uh look at Joe Alt and also uh geez, what was my JC, I mean not JC Latham, but, uh Mills. Tali Fuaga. Oh yeah. Amarius Mims. Fuaga. Two different types of body types, right? Sure. Look at Olu Fashionu again versus JC Latham. You see two different players. So less bulk. Less bulk on the left <laughs> side, more of a toned, agile, swift. Big man. Yes. That's lighter on his feet. Because when you say good versus bad footwork, does that simply mean balance, like staying on balance, or is it the speed with which you can move your feet to stay in front of a fast edge rusher? Yes, sir. That right that there. That part. The speed of it. Yeah. There is a separator right. between the footwork, ability to bend, um, and just body control, too. Those dudes, unless you're playing in the old NFL to where you have Orlando Paces playing left, you know? like And, and, and is that because... Is there any part of this that's because the 3-4 defense has become the norm? Like when you had a 4-3 defense and you had a 260-pound edge rusher that was rushing your quarterback that was more of a power rusher, a a Derek Barnett type who's a bit of a bigger body rushing the quarterback versus now, I know he's an older player, he's not new, but Von Miller's of the world who are so quick off the edge. When did that become more in vogue in the NFL? As far as speed rushers getting faster. It was Vaughn, I think, was one of the main starts of it. Vaughn right. Miller. That's but, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, it was Vaughn Miller. It was also having guys or defenses highlighting more of like individual play and setting guys up. J.J. Watt in the AFC South. Where did J.J. Watt play mostly? Everywhere. Yeah. He was inside. Yeah, I mean, he's... You know? He's a... Inside defensive tackle, he's an edge rusher outside on third downs at a 4-3 base nickel set kind of situation. Like, And even now, of course, when you mention like a Miles Garrett, moving him over to the right side, like they pick and choose where they're going to find their weak leaks, essentially. And a lot, of th- a lot of teams have neglected the right tackle position. They find the candy bar that is uh, in a bowl outside the house on yeah. Halloween. And everybody wants the one bite. they have to go in and find. They, they, they find the open candy bar, like you always say. Yep, and everybody yeah. wants a bite off of them. Coming up next, we could talk some more offensive line with a man who is playing on a Super Bowl winning offensive line. He is two-time Super Bowl champion and Vault for Life, Trey Smith, next on RKW. If you've been here for a while, you know what a big deal this is coming soon. Three incredible days, April 26th, 27th, and 28th. This is the big one. With unbelievable store-wide savings up to 35% off, they hold back nothing. From rings, earrings, bands, bracelets, pendants, thousands of engagement ring settings, natural and lab-grown diamonds, special pricing across the board with zero interest financing as well. This is when the staff at Genesis know they can break all the rules. Plus, 
World class designers have flown in with all new collections of fashion jewelry from New York and California. This is stuff you can't find anywhere else, and it will all be on sale. If you're getting engaged or have a special event coming up, whether that's graduation, Mother's Day, anniversaries, birthdays, whatever, you can't miss this incredible buying opportunity. Don't miss the expanded selection and the extreme value pricing. People drive for hours to be a part of this. So mark your calendars. Again, April 26th, 27th, and 28th, exclusively at Genesis Diamonds and Luxury pre owned Rolexes. They're located in Green Hills and uh, Cool Springs, both locations. See store for details.
Our KW Ramon, Kayla, and Will is brewed by 8th and Roast on 104.5 The Zone. We've got Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Wall spinning the hits. I'm Will Bowling, and joining us, he is a two-time defending Super Bowl champion. He is a Vol for life. He's everywhere. Trey Smith joins us on the phones this morning. Trey, what's up, man? How are you? What's going on, brother? Doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, uh, how does that feel, being introduced as a two-time Super Bowl champion now? I go, that's pretty hype. <laughs> 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 no, no, it's, it's, it's really amazing, man. I've uh, been really blessed. Um, it's pretty surreal even just hearing that, you know what I mean? Getting that first time something, but, you know, consecutively back-to-back two times, that's crazy. You being too you being too humble right now, Trey. You supposed to say, nah, it's it's the greatest <laughs> thing ever, man. Don't come here acting like you from East Tennessee. You from West Tennessee now. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. You know it's live, man. It's definitely different. It's okay. different though. No disrespect to East Tennessee people. My bad, y'all. We love them too. <laughs> we definitely do. Uh man, Trey, what what has this offseason been like for you, man? I know um uh, going to WrestleMania, you're at the Orange and White game. Uh, and just being able to to be a representative of not only the Chiefs, but uh, with everything that has happened, man, in this offseason and in Kansas City, representing that city and, and being a, a voice for just good, man. I just want to first commend you for for your role in in such a, 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 a tough situation in Kansas City, man, and just using your platform for so much good. Yeah, man, I appreciate you. Um, you know, ultimately that, that parade had been pretty tragically. Someone lost their life, but... Just being able to comfort uh, little Joey in that time, that was cool, man. Uh, and the way sports can bring us together from the WWE to, you know, obviously just basic football is really cool. But, man, it's been a whirlwind, bro. Um, been traveling a lot. Um, really nonstop on weekends, dude. It's almost a nonstop event. Mixing out with training, so I've just been super busy, man. But it's been work. It's been fun. How has, Trey, that uh... – your, your life changed since that event that happened at Kansas City at you guys' parade from, like you said, meeting a new friend or friends on the back of a bus. Uh, uh, the story goes, you guys were talking about wrestling and that kind of springboarded into a WrestleMania event for you. How did this all unfold? And I got to be honest with you. I, well, I have to ask the question before that. How, how did you feel in those moments, Trey? Because we all saw that the world saw what happened in Kansas City. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, the Super Bowl parade, man, how joyous of occasion that can be. And you're just celebrating that, you know, real life happens. Um, you know, your teammates inform you, the security is acting different, that, hey, there's an active shooter outside. So obviously, you know, whenever the situation started unfolding, just pretty much sheer panic for a lot of people, bro. Like, my thing was I was just trying to find a secure location, just stay calm, you know, try to keep people calm in that situation. But life got really serious in that moment. You know, I mean, it put it barely back into perspective that, you know, you got to really count your days in a way. You got to make sure you make the most out of every day because you don't know what can happen. Um, and for me, I felt like, you know, in that situation, once again, like for the little kid, we were on the buses about to leave. You could just see the panic on his face. Like all I wanted to do was put him back in focus, you know, make sure he's he's being a little kid again. Because in that moment, you know, life was messing with him. You see everything going on outside. So for me, it was just man, calming down the situation and bringing the moment back. Uh, you've also just been in, in different situations too, just professionally, Trey. Uh, I, I, we'll, we'll have this conversation because you're a current player. Uh, of course, the Titans need offensive linemen and stuff like that. And when it boils down to position changing, Trey, as far as going from tackle to guard, if you could explain, Trey, what was that transition for you? And why was it smart for you to be able to play guard in the NFL? And, mm -hmm. honest, and be honest about how did you feel going to the interior side of it too? Because being a tackle is a glorified position. But as far as career goes, there is a lot that has to happen mentally, physically to be able to be able to play at a professional level at that spot. Yep. So I know in like high school, I always thought, man, I would be the next left tackle. You know, I was looking up the guys like Cam Robinson, uh, Laramie Tunsil at the time. And I remember all the football camps I would go to, I would always be a tackle out there. And it took until I went to a, uh, a Nike opening camp in Oregon with LaCharles Bentley. And I took a couple reps to tackle, and he looked at me and said, you're a guard. And I was like, what? Like, no one had told me that at the time. So started doing a couple of guard reps, went to University of Tennessee, obviously, and then, like, I was playing tackle for spring with Butch for a little bit. And then Walt Wells, he's just like, what about playing guard? Like, let, let me see you do a one-on-one -on -one rep down there. I did it, dominated. And he's like, I'm not moving your ass anywhere. You're going to be a guard for the rest of the time here. <laughs> and for me, man, um, 
you know, as a high school, as a young kid, you're like, tackle is a hell of a lot sexier position. You know, those guys make all the money. You're in an island. It's super skilled. You know, like you said, it's a glorified position on the field. But, man, as soon as I started playing guard my freshman year at Tennessee, I was like, why well, I've been missing this my whole life. Because it fit me. The physicality, you know, how fast everything happens inside. Uh, it's just a fun position, man. You can really be a physical mauler at guard. It's a lot easier to be physical as heck at guard compared to with the tackle, which, you know, patience, the space out there. You're on an island the majority of the time. Guard, you're in there. You're able to bang around. No diddy. <laughs> About to bag it up. <laughs> Okay, all right. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring it back real quick, man. No Diddy. <laughs> hey, dog. All right. Okay. All right. We're we're back. We're back. With, with that being said, though, what what is the NFL left tackle to you? And watching guys that you play with versus the right tackle also. If you can break that down because Proud you did a really good job. It together right now. <laughs> yeah, you did a really good job talking about from going from tackle to guard. So what is it, the uh, difference between left tackle and right tackle in your opinion? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, man, uh, I'll put it like this. So for a lot of people who genuinely don't know ball like that, they always think about the left tackle, the blind side, uh, Michael Orr, you know, how they how they hype that position up. And let me let me phrase this properly because I'm not saying left tackle is the overrated position. I mean, it's one of the hardest. To me, playing tackle in the league, probably defensive back to me are the two hardest positions other than quarterback in terms of what you have to do from a physical standpoint. But I feel like left tackle being the blind side of most quarterbacks, like everyone's like, oh, they're the highest paid. They're they're playing the best defensive ends, et cetera, et cetera. But I think right tackles don't get that due credit too. I mean, you're playing basically the same position. So to me, I think they're both, they both take a high level of skill You've seen the pass rushers go not only from that that left tackle to the right tackle now. I mean, just play tackle in general. You have to be a supreme athlete, man. Like, you have to be cued in every single time because you're on that island, dude. You know, you're going against some of the best athletes on the field, but that space, man, that's, it's a really it's a different, a different situation. But to me, I think left tackle, right tackle, you know, obviously left tackles get to the claim, but I think right tackle is just as hard. You know what I'm saying? Because just with the pass rushers, they're so different nowadays. Dre Smith, a two-time Super Bowl champ for the Kansas City Chiefs, joining us now on RK Dub. So when it comes to how you've changed as a pro from year one entering the league to now, like how different is the off seasons for you? And, you know, coming back and saying, hey, we could go for a three-peat here. Like how realistic is that in your mind? And how does that kind of change what you do in terms of preparation in the offseason? Yeah. Well, I'm going to start by saying, just saying we can do a three-peat is absurd. Um, oh. Just being in that position is absurd, you know. I give God, God his credit and glory in that. But, um, you know, man, just the years adding up, you know, adding different uh, things and utilizing it in my toolbox every day, like, it's uh, it's, it's different. You know, I feel like the biggest uh, difference for me, uh, Ramon, you can interject too, like, I feel like the biggest thing, even from, like, year one to year two, is just knowing what to impact. Even in training camp, I mean, obviously OTA is coming up. I have a different plan with my body, being able to win a Super Bowl, understanding that, hey, you can't wait a month or three weeks even to, like, get back to training. Like, yeah, give your body time to rest, but you got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You know what I mean? So, for me, it's mixing up cardio, making sure my weight's right, making sure I'm dressing, addressing parts of my body that needs fixing instead of just waiting and you know, just being like Superman, like your body's not going to heal unless you go do some work and get it right. So for me, man, I think it's just knowing what to expect. That's just been the biggest, uh, the biggest fix and easiest indicator of uh, growth. Man, Trey, your defense was obviously a big part of, of you know, having success this last year and, and helping you lead you guys to a Super Bowl as well. I know Legereus Sneed uh, over here now with the Tennessee Titans. What can you tell mm-hmm. us about that uh, ball player? And my God, everything we've heard from everybody is just this guy is a dude. Dog. Y'all got a dog. <laughs> dog. 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 <laughs> dog. <laughs> Tell me, man. Y'all got Sneed, man. Let me tell you something about Legereus Sneed. Um, in terms of a teammate, um, I think first year, I never really talked to Sneed, right? Very quiet individual. 
but very vocal on the field. I'm talking about a guy that's going to lay it on the line every single time he steps out there. A highly skilled player, a player that, I mean, once again, dog, but, like, he, he's not afraid on that field, man. And, I mean, you look at what he did in the playoffs. You look what he did this past season. I mean, that's all pro, um, pro bowl level caliber type player you guys just got. And I wish him nothing but success. That's my brother, man. I'm super proud of him. I'm happy. I'm just happy for him because – I saw the effort he put on on the field, and but in that building every single day, man, he brought it. He absolutely brought it. So you guys are getting a heck of a player, man. I'm just so happy for him and his family. Two-time Super Bowl champion and Vol for Life, Trey Smith, is our guest this morning on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. Trey, I know you were in Knoxville for the orange and white game. Uh, what do you like about Josh Heupel's team going into this season? And uh, look, this is the first time that maybe we have had – this high of expectations in an off season uh, in Knoxville in quite some time. Uh, what do you like about that group getting to spend time around them? Yeah, I love what Coach Heupel's done. Um, just speaking as a former player, being able to be that close to the program, um, have a relationship with the coaches like that. I think it's really special that guys feel comfortable coming back. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, man, I really, I really, really, really am excited about that quarterback, man. Nico. I'm excited about him. Uh, I think he has a tremendous amount of talent. We've got to keep it protected, keep developing him. I think the future is very bright with him at the helm. Um, now, on top of that, man, you know, I just think the, um, just hanging around the old linemen and stuff, I'm, I'm, look, I'm just looking forward to the season, man. I think our D linemen is going to be great. Uh, Omari, shout out Big O. Uh, Pierce, I mean, he's, he's an absolute monster too. So I think we have some good pieces, and I think we're just going to bring it together this season. But obviously, time will tell, but – Look, really, really looking forward to this season, man. We got a lot of good pieces, and I like where Tennessee football is headed in the direction they're headed. We always uh, get to a lot of topics we talk with VFL <laughs> Trey Smith. We hit it all uh, with uh, the two time no Super Bowl champion. Man, Trey, congratulations on all your success, man. And uh, just congratulations on the way you've been able to use your platform in such a good way. Uh, and I know making this serious again for a minute, just out of a, a horrific situation, man. You, you've been a light for a lot of people, I know. Uh, over this off season, so uh, kudos to you, man, and uh, uh, we got to do this again soon, man. It's always fun. Yeah, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Hey, hey, Trey, on, Trey, yeah. never, <laughs> ever, and I mean, don't even think about it. Ever grow up? Uh, you hear never. me? <laughs> ever. We don't love you. Trey. Ever. Get you a guy no, that can no. do both. Yeah. Please don't hey, ever no grow doubt. up. I love it. Good stuff, hey, Trey. Hey, Thanks. Hey, I, let me let me throw this in real quick. Uh, whenever I do retire, uh, let me in there so I can have my petty session. <laughs> <laughs> got, hey, I'm we serious. will give you a segment. You got, a list. You got, I got what? A list. I, I can't I can't reveal yes. too many, but I got a list. Man. Oh, you got, a, you, got a, you got a you got a revenge <laughs> list. <laughs> oh no no no! I, I got receipts. Oh, I like it. Hey, just know our producer man wants to recruit you to his team in case you hit free agency too. By the way, <laughs> tell, tell him to call all. my agent, man. We'll, we'll get something fixed. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Uh, great stuff, man. Appreciate Thanks so much, Trey. Trey. Yeah, appreciate y'all. All right, there he is, Trey Smith, <laughs> oh with God, us here this guy. morning. Gosh, that is uh, that's awesome. Oh, if we're not running that question about Legereus, by the way, Kayla, I'm over here playing I, around. You, the professional here this to, morning. I was trying to keep it, you know. That was but great. That's that just was how great we work on him. this show. The navigational beacons were right. here, and then us and Trey were way <laughs> over here. We were like Michael yeah. Scott. We, we <laughs> left the navigational beacons. We behind. did. Dog. That was awesome. That's awesome. what he had to say yeah, about, about sixteen Legereus. times, huh? Dog, and he just kept. Over and over. What you think? The dog. dog. We will definitely uh, play that whole conversation again tomorrow yeah. morning uh, if you missed it. I can tell he's friends with you, Ramon. Why? Because I told him, you didn't have to do my Ravens like that in the AFC Championship game. <laughs> and he told me, hey, walk in your trap and take over your trap. <laughs> That's my dog. <laughs> He said we had to come in and rob the bank. I said, let me get you in here with these guys. I, don't, I, don't. I literally feel like when we talk to Trey Smith, we are talking to Ramon Foster 10 yeah. years ago. That's my Seriously. dog. Like if, a West Tennessee guy who moved from tackle to guard in the NFL, mm -hmm. who did not get drafted nearly as highly as he should have been, who represents Tennessee, but can also be petty on the radio <laughs> and... And just take it anywhere. I mean, literally, I feel like we're talking to you 10 That's years ago. That's a great point. That's and still guy. hasn't grown up, like you yes. said, to give your word of advice. Please Never grow don't, up. Uh, we, I, we might have to look to upgrade, though, because Trey has oh, started gosh. every game that he's played the NFL. <laughs> Ramon <laughs> Ramon played in 160 oh, and only goodness. started 145. Only? That's a whole That's a whole hey, season well, you didn't start. What go, happened, man? I, I was an undrafted guy. I had to prove myself, You got to get like man. Trey. Trey I, was six-round pick. You I know? started every year, though. 
four games my last uh, uh, four okay. games at the end of my rookie year, <laughs> and then twelve do, the next year. Hey, hey, man, how many stars you got in the NFL? Coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Go to break. Hey, uh, look at your favorite players. They probably ain't got that many. That's me flexing right there. Okay. It's cool. I like. I'm you getting. Flex. We're getting a ton of tweets. Like uh, Shelly on Facebook Live says, "Love him." GBO. Uh, Daryl in the borough on YouTube. Definitely going to go have to have to go back and watch that again. <laughs> I got a text from a buddy who's an Alabama fan. Like, man, Trey's awesome. Yeah. That's wild. Like, I feel like it, whatever we got to do to get Trey on this radio program regularly and do something regular with that dude, like I, Titans fans, yeah. I think still love him. Vols fans obviously love him. But, man, I, I just feel like there are certain personalities that regardless of who you cheered for in college, when that guy becomes a pro, you can understand that's just a that's a good guy yeah. and, a, and a human being that you want to root for as a pro and and Trey is just he's crushing it man and did you also I, this is the other part I love about guys that love their what they do too is parents again I tell anybody athletes in general there's a level of fun there's a level of anxiety and there's a level of being a a, a butthole mm-hmm. that you have to have. Okay. Easy. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> like, a, 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 you have to have an edge, is what I'm right. saying. Trey's edge he's is he still edge. has that list of yeah. people that overlooked him. That's what his segment's going to be. And I list. can't wait to hear when he come in here and retire what his list is. <laughs> I remember when uh, when Who's I was in Tennessee. That was my one year as a beat writer covering Tennessee football. And when we interviewed Trey right after he signed, he had a plan for his football career. The first day he stepped on campus, and it's exactly what we said. If you missed the conversation at 620 this morning, uh, check it out in hour one of the podcast about know what coaches' plans are for you and go into your college career with a plan. And Trey came in as a freshman, and he Mm -hmm. talked about his career as a football player like he was a senior. He told us, man, Tennessee is not only where I want to be on the field, but, man, this studio we're sitting in right now, VFL Films, the way you can grow a brand as a football player after football and after college football, and you can be a professional just in this studio right here and using VFL films and using like that side of football. Like he understood that as an 18 year old smart. Okay. And and you can see now as a, however old he is, 23 year old, 24 year old, that old it it, it's, it's the same kind of thing. And really that's, cool. That's the thing was he, he was getting, you know, you know, draft, all the stuff about the draft coming out of the draft. It, everything you heard about him, phenomenal. Like, great leader. Like, all the stuff. And then it was, well, the heart. Yeah. And it's just, it's a bummer that he even had to slip that far. But maybe that's what made him who he is today. And keeping those receipts sometimes makes you even more of a, a player that goes out there and balls out. And instead, the Titans, Titans. went in another, in another direction. Yep. <laughs> and he's on, they're on the receipt. Coming up, <laughs> uh, the latest gambling scandal. In sports, uh, details came out yesterday. This is one of the most ridiculous stories in sports right now that we're not talking about enough, and we'll talk about it coming up next. Hey, it's Kayla Anderson for the Wayne Vision Institute, now offering intense pulse light treatments. So maybe you're wondering, well, what is that? Because don't they do everything in terms of eyes? They do, but they also take care of your skin. This is a photofacial treatment rejuvenating the skin after sun damage. Maybe you've seen some dark spots appear now that you're getting a little bit older. Treatments also are great for evening out the skin tone and texture as well as hyperpigmentation. So for more information on intense pulse light treatments, along with other services, you can visit wayingvisioninstitute.com today. And going back to, you know, everything that they do in terms of your eye health, they're phenomenal. Uh, From the front desk to the doctors, they are awesome at giving you exactly what you need to know about your current eye status and the future of your eyes because we all know as we get older, our vision starts to get worse. They offer free online vision seminars every Tuesday at 6.45 p.m. So if you just want to get an idea of what they're all about, you can do this. So go ahead and RSVP. You can schedule your free consultation and your treatment today. All you got to do is visit visit wangvisioninstitute.com.
Wrap it up, hour number three on a Wednesday morning edition of Ramon, Kayla, and Will. RKW is brewed by Eight the Roast, and we have got lots of pass catchers to scout with Rhett Bryan coming up in 10 minutes. Tight ends and wide receivers, the positions we look at this morning. You can download the Ramon, Kayla, and Will podcast wherever you download podcasts, and you're going to want to if you missed our conversation a few minutes ago with Trey Smith. Mm-hmm. Awesome stuff. Uh, serious and about as unserious as you can possibly get at the same time. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, The details around Jonte Porter and his FanDuel account or maybe FanDuel accounts that have gotten him suspended from the NBA. Have you guys seen these details? Yes, I have. They are crazy. So essentially, you've got Raptors center Jonte Porter who owned and operated a VIP account at FanDuel in the state of Colorado that wagered millions of dollars in total from 2021 to 2023. This is according to the Action Network. Porter allegedly placed over 1,000 wagers at the sports book. Uh, A source saying he was firing all the time. Uh, Porter was a member of three different G League teams during these alleged wagering activities, uh, and then his FanDuel account ceased activity a few weeks before he signed a two-way contract with the Toronto Raptors during two games earlier this season wagers on Jonte Porter to perform badly were the most profitable bets of the day according to data from DraftKings he played but left early with injuries in both of these games so anyone who bet the under on a player prop with Jonte Porter profited on January 26th in a game against the Clippers Betters were betting with five figures on under five and a half points, under four and a half rebounds, and under one and a half assists for Jonte Porter. If you are betting five figures on a fringe roster NBA player to score under five and a half points, you need to be on a watch list somewhere. Mm-hmm. Which, which is why. DraftKings reported the under on Porter's three-pointers was the most profitable wager that day. He attempted zero and finished the game with zero points, three rebounds, and one assist. And and he was so smart in his approach, too. He would start the game to allow the bet to be certified and then somehow have a phantom injury. He had a corneal abrasion in the game that Will was discussing. Oh, my my eye is hurt. I can't see to shoot the ball, coach. But... Bets are calculated, bets are yeah. accepted, and we're good. Like, this is by far one of the craziest, one of the craziest situations out there. For the P- the people he was involved with, with the VIP DraftKings group, they definitely Fanduel. had a, FanDuel, yeah. FanDuel, FanDuel okay. VIP group, they definitely had a group chat somewhere. And they get, you get like perks. So yeah. as mm-hmm. a VIP, he was afforded the typical perks provided to a client who bets a substantial amount, including promotional activity and tickets to sporting events, according to sources. Which he didn't need. I mean, he's paid up. His brother's one of the richest guys in the NBA as it pertains to his career, world champion and everything. But, like, those are very – the issues – the things that's going to get him is this. The the volume of bets on him in those moments and how they bet on him, too. Like, who is bringing up – what, Jante – like, who is John Tate Porter? Who's betting on him on unders? Like, I get that you can, but the volume and the amount of money. That's like, where it's like, okay. That's where it's <laughs> like, that's why I say sometimes, like, athletes, man, y'all just got to, mm. y'all got to stick to doing what you do. Like, if you good at catching the ball, just do that. Like, if you can just do your thing, like, because a lot of us sometimes think we're smarter than the average bear, and you just really smart to your friend group. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the situation for him. And I'm a huge advocate of, hey, do more, be more, be better than where you are. Y'all know, I always say this. Like, if I do something, I want to be taken serious. Right. Like, you've been a betting expert, John Tate Porter. You are not to be taken serious at all. No, this Just, makes me laugh almost, and it's not funny. Go home, um, dude. So is he, he's under investigation right now? He is under okay. investigation in a, uh, I guess, leave of absence. Okay. He'll never touch a ball no, again. No, no people. They will never let him on so the court. He did not like make the bets himself either. Was the thing. So one of the sources said FanDuel did not accept any wagers on the NBA or college basketball from Jonte Porter, uh, who of course is brother Michael. If you're unfamiliar, Michael Porter Jr. was on the Nuggets NBA championship winning team last year. This is essentially, like you said, Ramon, he's in a group text with somebody and he's feeding everybody all the bets on what mm-hmm. he's going to have, and what's... they're giving him a cut. 
is what's going on. Yeah, they're getting. I mean, if you imagine hitting on his unders, like what was the odds on something like that for him? Like, well, the, the, the odds are going to be like plus one ten or minus one ten. Yeah, like, the it's same not the every odds. Time. That's the that's the thing. Because if you have an over under, like the odds are going to be essentially the same every time. But it's the amount of money you know you can bet when you know you're going to win. Yeah, right. Like, there's video nice. of him making a three, and he's like mad yeah. immediately. <laughs> Yes, there is. No, it is. I want to see the video. You got to see it, I Kayla. See the video. Like, can you imagine what Thanksgiving must be like at their uh, house? Like, you've got Michael Porter Jr., who won a championship with the Nuggets, and then you've got this loser. He gets kicked out. He gets kicked out of the league for betting on the games. <laughs> like, he's like, "Hey, Michael, come on, my, hey brother, give give me a give me give me a bet, man. I need one." He's like itching at the table, itching at the table, dog. I. The, hey, everybody got a hustle, man. Every squirrel got to get a nut. Oh, my God. <laughs> Coming up next, pass catchers with what Rhett Bryan. The fourth and final hour of the show with the executive producer of Titans Radio is next. It's Ramon Foster for Wesley Mortgage, y'all. Here's a website, whywesley.com. And I'm going to tell you why in a second, but W-H-Y-W-E-S-L-E-Y.com, whywesley.com. And it starts with the owner, Chuck McDowell, who's a local Nashville native, man, that cares about this community and is proud to serve it. Chuck reinvests in the people and the places that make Nashville such a wonderful place. While other mortgage companies are downsizing, Chuck McDowell and the Wesley Mortgage team are rapidly expanding in Nashville, keeping people working in the careers that they love, and they would love to have you join their team, which is why I gave you the website, all right? Chuck and the leadership team at Wesley Mortgage have a support system in place to help you succeed in the mortgage business, ensuring your loans close on time, making sure you get paid, giving you back the time to build your business and bring back the fun to the mortgage mortgage professional with unique opportunities with the Tennessee Titans in the Music City Grand Prix. They make closing deals and building relationships fun again. So if you're in the mortgage industry and you're tired of the grind, tired of the pressure and tired of the micromanaging everything to make sure your clients get handled correctly, then you owe it to yourself to go to whywesley.com.
9 o'clock. What's going on, guys? Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. NBA play-in tournament underway. Two games last night. The Lakers grounding the Pelicans, 110-106. to Pelican star Zion Williamson believed to suffer a left hamstring injury last night. Williamson had 40 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists before having to leave in the final minutes of crunch time, having tests later today to confirm the injury. Also, the Kings taking down the Warriors, 118-94. to Clay Thompson, rough shooting night 0 of 10 from the field 0 of 6 from three and the Cowboys making another addition to their backfield after adding Ronald Jones earlier in the offseason signing running back Royce Freeman to a one-year deal Freeman had 319 yards on 77 carries with two touchdowns last year with the Rams he was a former third round pick out of Denver in 2018 for all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs visit USSTN.com breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols this is 1045 the zone. Nine a.m. in Nashville on a Wednesday morning edition of Ramon, Kayla, and Will. We hope your morning is off to a terrific start. Let's make it that much more terrific with the executive producer of Titans Radio, Rhett Bryan, putting up four fingers for the yeah, fourth yeah. quarter of RKW this morning. We've for got Ramon life. Foster. Okay, sorry, I got Kayla crazy. Anderson. Robert Walsh is our producer. Rhett Bryan in studio. I'm Will Bowling. Good morning, Rhett. How are we doing? I am good. We are eight days away from the 2024 NFL Draft on Titans Radio, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Over 77 years, Tennesseans have trusted Farm Bureau Health Plans. Love it. There you Love go. that. You have got Love a binder that. in here that is bigger than two encyclopedias put together. Well, and that's just part of it. I mean, I'll be adding sheets to mine uh, in the next 96 hours or so, um, and, and notes and scribblings and collections of things um that i've been looking at for the last three months but uh you know me this is it i love this time of the year this is good stuff so where are you in the process now i know you and mac have been putting together your boards and ranking each position we put our final board together last thursday morning nice and i'm in process of uh, transcribing that not only to the uh, a giant board that we had it on a, a latest iteration but i'm, uh, I'm going to put it into a spreadsheet or something of that nature so that we'll have access to it uh for all three days of the draft and yeah we time it out just like what what teams are doing like Rand carthon and and the staff that's what they did last week was basically set their final board, and I'm sure they probably worked through the weekend on that. And this window of time, eight days out, is where they can take a little breath and get ready for, you know, what what is that, that 72 hours yeah. in those three days. It, there's a little chance for them to catch their breath. And um, it's funny, too, because I was listening to um, – the Move the Sticks podcast with Dan- Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks yesterday. And they were talking about, because both of them have been in evaluator rooms like that. And they said, you know, wh- what did you do? Well, we, you know, we went bowling one time or we yeah. did a golf tournament or, you know, just something to kind of let the steam off. Nice. And the calm before the storm, so to speak. But that's where, you know, the people on the fringes are calling and working the phones, making sure, like Daniel Jeremiah said, that his first year in, in a, in the Ravens building, he said we would always go over to Brian Billick's house for a, a big catered cookout to just kind of show appreciation just before the draft. But he said, my first year in uh, doing all this, I had to take that stack of papers and call all the potential draftees to make sure I had a good number for them, mm-hmm. what they're doing for draft day, how I can reach them. Is your agent still so and so? Because they change agents and those things, and getting all that stuff ready. Because when when it starts, you're in it. So, and then there's other staff members. Coach Mack has done this. He he would work the phones prior, and then obviously during, going, hey, you know, when we talked about pick X for pick Z and player Y, 
Would you still be up for that? What, what are we talking about if, if you're talking about chumming the phones? So nice. that's kind of what's going on at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park and 31 other places right now before we get ready for this thing. It's going to be exciting. I love it. Uh, we are talking pass catchers today with Rhett Bryan, tight ends and wide receivers. And I want to start, Rhett, at the tight end position in this draft. And I want to start after number one. Because Brock Bowers is the unanimous number one tight end in this draft. He will be a first-round pick. He is loved by many. I want to start with who's next. Because in Dane Brugler's beast draft guide in The Athletic, he has four tight ends that round out that top five with grades between the second to the third to fourth range. Jadavian Sanders out of Texas, Theo Johnson from Penn State, Jared Wiley from TCU, and Cade Stover from Ohio State. Who is your number two tight end on the Mac Rhett draft board? We have Jatavian Sanders second as well. And, and let me say this. I know we're skipping over Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers, by definition, is a tight end. He's really a flex. He is fantasy football come to life. Like, he's your ultimate flex flex player. Basketball yeah. turn. He's a I, combo guard or he, stretch he, forward. He absolutely is. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he can just, just line him up wherever you want. And, you know, he's not a tremendous inline blocker because that's not what he was supposed to do. And that's, you know, when we get to the the wide receivers part of this, that's why Lad McConkey didn't have the numbers. He had a couple of dings and injuries, but it, it was the Brock Bowers show, as we know. But, yeah, Jatavian Sanders, I, it's a pretty good drop-off from Brock Bowers to this next group. And, and, yeah, when we're talking about the next three or four guys in this, we're talking – into night two, going into day three. Uh, there'll be a few positions where they'll start to be a little run on things. Um, that I expect tight end at some point to do that. R- running backs will do that in, in night two. Uh, safeties will do that in night two. Um, but Jatavian Sanders, he didn't test super well at, at the combine. I think he had, yeah, yeah, four, six, nine, 40, one, six in his first 10. Uh, 30 inch broad, a 30 inch vertical leap at his pro day, 9 6 broad, uh, decent short shuttle, only eight reps at 225. Um, but the thing about Jatavian is, you know, he, he's he's a versatile guy, he can do all kinds of stuff. Now, he he played, I think, what was it, uh, a little over 60 percent of his career snaps at Texas came as an inline guy, and the other part. Um, was in other positions. He has a 68.9% first down to touchdown rate in 2023. So, I mean, the skill set's there. Uh, I think it'll make somebody a nice player. Yeah, he will. And that position, though, too, has to be an extension of the offense. It's always that. Those young tight ends have to be quarterback friendly. If you're talking about somebody not named Brock Bowers, then that's where it gets very sticky into what you're doing and how they're going to be parts, too. And that's what's most fascinating to me about that position. It could be a team killer for certain defenses if done and drafted and put in the right position, right? Because there's a lot of guys that will come out and that you say to yourself, wow, where was he at? And next thing you know, he's got 120 yards on the day for you at the tight end position. That's why it still is important, right? Because, again, in a world where you're looking for mi- mix matches, right, matchups, right, where, where can we win? That's where that speed comes into place, and that's where you have a guy like Theo Johnson or Kate Stover also out of Ohio State that can be very problematic for guys too, right? And a guy that has risen up mm-hmm. and done a nice job in this process that is rising, and not just because um, Coach Mack shares, shares that alma mater, but the Horned Frog from TCU, Jared Wiley, has moved up quite a bit in this. Frog. Uh, frog mm-hmm. is what he would say, but it's funny you mentioned Theo Johnson. He's somebody I thought, you know, tested pretty doggone well. I mean, 6'6", 259, hands 10 and a quarter, arms 33, wing 81, 80 and three quarters inches, ran a 4'5", 740 at 6'6", 259, first 10, 1'6", 39 and a half inch vertical leap, 10 and a half broad. His three cone drill was 7'15", his short shuttle was under 4'2". I mean, you know... And the other part for a guy like him that's going to be super valuable, a regular on punt and kick coverage as a senior, had 243 snaps 
in, in, in the team's part of this. So he can be a core teamer guy. And he was versatile. He 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 lined up out wide. He did inline. He did slot. Uh, real quick, Theo Johnson, we talk a lot about the relative athletic score, and we had Kent Lee Platty on the show a month ago to talk about athleticism and making that a metric on a number of 1 to 10 ranked from 1987 to 2024. Theo Johnson's was a 9.99 relative athletic score out of 10. That ranks him, as far as athleticism, the number two tight end since 1987 in all of this data as far as wow. just your athleticism on paper between 40 time, height, weight, 10 yard split, 20 yard split, vertical, broad, shuttle, and three cone. Theo Johnson has the number two resume of athleticism among all tight ends from 1987 to 2024. For a dude that big, I mean, that's those are explosive numbers. And obviously, that quick, sorry. No, no, it's good. I, I yeah. wasn't aware of that yet, but I'm not completely crammed for the exam next week. So, <laughs> and we've been next Wednesday. I might have said, yeah, I knew that. I, I do have to ask you really quick because I know we're going to move on to wide receivers in the next segment. But when it comes to the Tennessee Titans and realistically drafting a tight end, I know a lot of people taking a lot from Brian Callahan's comments on the tight end position, and, it, and he said, oh, we, we need more. We need more bodies, right? We, I want at least five bodies at camp. Does that quickly relate to, oh, we got to go get somebody in the draft? Uh, not necessarily, because um, here's the thing. There's, this is one of the positions in this draft like it has been in, in multiple years. Uh, it's not a huge draft for tight ends. And tight ends are used so differently in the game of football, and not only in college, but certainly in the NFL. Um, but let me say this. Does that mean that they wouldn't take a one in the seventh or a, a priority free agent? And maybe that's sure. – see, that's the thing that's going to be fascinating about day three of the draft is how much has NIL affected yeah. that stuff? And the Titans, if you're still – if Rand Carthon still sitting there with two seventh-round picks – at 242 and 252, does he take somebody with a flyer pick like that instead of having to work the phones for a priority free agent that every agent that they have is going to say, my guy should have been drafted, and, you know, you're going through all that. Instead, you just pick him. And what I mean by that is McAllen Castles from Tennessee is a prime example of that kind because. That dude's an athlete, yes, mm-hmm. and he's he's probably a priority free agent. Could get tagged by somebody right there at the end of day three, but that would be the kind of example I I would tend to believe that that Brian Callahan would be yeah. talking about. Um, so you know, and, and look, there's value in, in the middle rounds of this stuff, depending on who you want. With Rep Brian coming up next, we're going to talk some wide receivers uh, at the very top. Some interesting comps that were put out. Uh, by a trusted executive in the NFL about the top three receivers specifically. But we can go the top level, the middle, and the bottom of the barrel, where there is value in the draft from days one, two, and three at the wide receiver position with Rhett Bryant coming up next. It's Ramon Foster for Secure Line. Here to tell you, man, they want to focus in on uh, on providing a prime service to their customer base, okay? It's this simple. You're probably wondering what prime means to you. It means this. There won't be any contract changes at all. There won't be any switching of companies at all. There will not be a drop in quality at all as it pertains to how they service your lawn. Everything they provide for you is something that you will see directly in your yard and will be one of the best in the neighborhood, like mine is. I'm bragging a little bit, man, but here's the thing about them providing that that uh prime service they are local they've been here for over 20 years in this area not just that they're punctual that your, your techs that come out to your house to service your lawn will be on time they'll alert you your bill is always awesome and the other better thing about them if you don't likely simply drop them if there's something you don't like call them if they can't fix it let them go because they are are sure about what they do and how they service your yard if you need anything done to your your lawn you can reach them 
uh, by calling them at 615-893-8455. Or you can go online. They have live chats where they can give you a quote online. Or they'll send somebody to your house if you directly you want them to directly see your yard and how they need to treat it. Again, call them, 615-893-8455, or go to securelawn.com.
Wednesday morning in hour number four. It's RKW on 104.5 The Zone. Brewed up by 8th and Roast. Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling, Rhett Bryan in studio. There are a lot of wide receivers in this 2024 draft class, especially if you are shopping in the first round. What I love about draft analysis with Rhett Bryan is you're going to get a day one option, you're going to get a day two option, <laughs> and you are absolutely going to get a day three option. And uh, you're also going to get full weekend coverage of the NFL draft on Titans Radio next weekend. Yes, indeed. Farm Bureau Health Plans is bringing it to you. We're on the air 6 p.m. Uh, next Thursday night from the draft party at Nissan Stadium. And we're on until 10. We're on 6 uh, p to 9 p. Friday night right here in the studios. And then Saturday afternoon, 4 to 6, myself, Mike, and Coach Mack um, will do wrap-up coverage uh, of all seven rounds. So we have about nine hours of coverage to bring you. It should be a lot of fun. Ramon's going to be on our panel. Amy Wells will be with us. Uh, Brent Hubs of on 3 volquestcom will join us again on Friday night telling uh, all the interesting recruiting stories about these young men that are getting drafted. It's going to be fun. I love it. You will hear Brent Hubbs uh, Friday morning with us at 720 and Friday night with Titans Radio for yeah. Titans Radio Draft Cup. Indeed. Fantastic. All right, let's talk some wide receivers, Rhett. Um, we have discussed the top three quite a bit, and I don't think we should overlook the differences and the nuances that separate Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunze. On your board... If you are willing to share how you have them ranked, how do you classify those three guys at the top of the wide receiver board? So we obviously have Marvison, Marvin Harrison Jr. at the top. And then I believe after that we have Malik Neighbors. In fact, I think we have it just the way, same way Dane Brugler does uh, in the 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 uh, the Beast from The Athletic. We have Harrison, then Malik Neighbors, then Roma Dunze, then Brian Thomas Jr., um, and then we have in the bottom of that pod, A.D. Mitchell from Texas. Uh, and then, you know, when you draw a line and you have a, a second pod, that doesn't mean they won't go in the second, you know, they could go in the bottom of the yeah. first. All that's kind of fluid. But um, so, you know, look, Marvin Harrison Jr. has the pedigree. He's the route runner. He's the technician. He's ready-made. I mean, Look, when we saw him at the combine with his dad in the hotel of the lobby we're staying at, the, lo the hotel lobby, uh, he's a lot bigger than his pop. Like he's, you look at that and you go, "Yep, that's an NFL receiver." And uh, you know, all of these guys are going to have things they're going to have to work on, but this top three is a lot ready-made, uh, pretty much. And, and then Malik Neighbors. You know, Malik Neighbors beat him out to be the Bolitnikoff Award winner. I mean, what a tremendous year he had, uh, 1,500 yards. I forget how many touchdowns, 14, 15, 16 touchdowns. And the testing is what's just ridiculous. I mean, at six feet, nearly 200 pounds, ran a 4'3", 40, uh, 1.56 in his first 10. A 10.9 brought a 42-inch vertical leap at his pro day. I mean, Good grief. Um, you know, he's – the thing about Malik Neighbors is this. Because of those numbers, what's one of the hardest things for an NFL team to manufacture? X plays on offense. Explosive plays of 20 yards along. This guy's an X play machine. I mean, he – he led uh, all FBS football players with 34 catches of 20-plus yards last year mm. and worked outside and in the slot about half the time in each place. He, he, he is someone that can create explosive plays for you on offense. Like, he is Brian Callahan's dream in terms of somebody that could take the top off of a defense. And the thing is, it's not one of these, ah, oh, just bomb it to him. He can take a two yard catch and take it eighty. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, he he ran away from SEC talent regularly. He, he did, and and what's super unique too, Red, about if you don't give a Marvin Harrison Jr. is this is what I've always been told, and that's where you know when we're talking about success of people, of players, right? I've always been told that at positions you got to look at the tape and see what they actually did. 
at the wide receiver position, what are you hiring them to do, Rhett? Catch the football. You know what's super unique about uh, Malik Neighbors and also Roma Dunze? In the years that they were at their school when they became starters, like the freshman year for Malik Neighbors, 28 receptions. All right, cool. 417 yards, still a good average, all right? But then in 2022, 72 receptions. And then in 2023, 89 receptions. That's a ton of footballs coming his way, Rhett. And then you also look at the number three guy that's slated as far as ranking goes. All right, see, uh, freshman year, six receptions. All right, 41 receptions, sophomore year. And then he got 75 receptions. And then 92. That was one thing I, I was told about. How do you find talent at a position sometimes? Sometimes look at the volume in footballs. Two goos I always reference on this show. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders and Antonio Brown. Those are two dudes who are lower round guys on the back end. But when you look at the volume of receptions, that's where you start to somewhat believe, all right, these dudes are pass catchers. We're not talking about 40 yard, I mean 45 receptions for 1,000 yards. Like, that was probably schematics, right, scheming guys up, getting open in certain situations. But when you got 92 receptions as far as Roma Duse go, with mm-hmm. over 1,600 yards, and I know the championship games and the playoff runs all a part of that too, but 92 receptions for 12 games, 14 games, that's a lot of volume, Rhett, where you got to believe what they put on tape. Well, let's take it a step further. So you're talking about Malik Neighbors with 89 receptions. 18-yard average per catch, 89 mm. catches. Roma Dunze, uh, 17.8 on 92 catches. And the thing about Roma Dunze, he worked – a lot of that offense. I mean, he was, you know, obviously he was Michael Penix's best friend in this, and even though that's taking nothing away from Jalen Milden and Jalen Polk. But um, 75% he worked out wide, 25% down the slot. But uh, the thing that jumps out about Roma Dunze is uh, he had an FBS best 1,640 receiving yards and elite first down to touchdown ratio of 80 Point four percent, which he's underlining with this. He's the best combat 50-50 ball catcher in this draft. And his quarterback, Michael Penix, best deep ball thrower yeah. quarterback in this draft. Uh, so those two hooked up with regularity. And let me let me get, circle back for a second to Marvin Harrison Jr. From what I understand it, he took some of his NIL money and has become an investor in this next generation jugs machine that you see wide outs and tight ends catching balls from the one of those events. And I can't remember what it was, but I I heard Daniel Jeremiah tell us the story that he had that thing set up on the roof of the hotel. He was staying at catching 200 balls a night. (laughs) That's the kind of dude. That's the kind of dude. Like he's, and he's the only, really the only top flight, First round grade guy out of this class that did not work out at the combine, did not have a pro day. He said, I'm focusing on my next job. And obviously, he did interviews. He's taken 30 visits. He's done this and that and the other. But he's like, nope, I'm ready to, you know, and of course, Hall of Fame dad kind of get him right on yeah. routes and breaking routes off. And, but you're right. What's wide receiver? What do they want? They want you to get open, catch the ball, make something happen with it. So. You've talked about some of these, you know, high caliber, the the names we're hearing a lot, the first rounders. Uh, I know that Roman Wilson out of Michigan was reported to make a top 30 visit to the Titans Mm -hmm. in the last month or so. I'm just curious is in another draft that's not so extraordinary in a big way at the top with these guys, he might be a little bit more talked about. What do you see in a guy like him? Well, first of all, Roman Wilson is, you know, there's a lot of slot receiver guys like this guy is. Uh, he's a little on the smaller side. He's 5'11", 185 pounds. But the production, I mean, he was a huge reason why Michigan won the national championship. I mean, yeah, he took a lot of those guys. But think about this. He scored a touchdown on 25% of his catches last year. Think about that. Yeah. One in four was a tutty. Um, so yeah, he had 48 for 789 and 12 in this. And he's one of the guys that has uh kind of carried that on. He he did it at the senior bowl, he's done it at combine testing. I mean, he is there'll be a run, another run on receivers, and he'll be one of the early names in night two that you will start hearing. I mean, 
him and the Malachi Corleys and the Ricky Pearsalls and, you know, if Ladd McConkey lasts that long mm-hmm. from Georgia. But, yeah, Roman, I like Roman Wilson a lot. And, and, see, that's the thing about everybody wants to tie everything to that 40 time with uh, Xavier Worthy from Texas. Xavier Worthy is 165 pounds soaking wet. Now, let me say this. Because of that elite speed, I could certainly see – Kansas City taking him in the last pick of the first round because that's the one thing they need in that group is take the top off the defense. They traded for Marquise Hollywood Brown from the the Cardinals. They could use another piece like that because, quite frankly, had that receiving core been better, they probably would have won more than 11 games and cruised to the Super Bowl instead of having to battle their way uh, like they did down the stretch. Rhett, when you talk about Ricky Pearsall out of Florida, a player who started his career uh, at Arizona State, he is a very experienced player who is uh, going to be 24 years old when he takes his first NFL snap. Uh, Will be 24 on September the 9th. 965 yards last season, four touchdowns, just two drops, only six drops in his entire career, led Florida in receiving each of the past two seasons. And I think for him, Rhett, the interesting thing is if you are looking for a route runner technician out of the slot who isn't as small and maybe not as injury prone. As Ladd McConkie. As Ladd McConkie and and Roman Wilson, too. He's not necessarily injury prone. He's just a littler. He's a smaller guy. Right. Roman Wilson, 5'10", 185. You look at Ricky Pearsall, 6'1", 191. He's not that tiny gidget gadget, as you say, Lad McConkey type, but he's also not been hurt in his college career. And the explosion is there. Four right. four one of the forty, one four nine in his first ten. So his get off is you know go forty two inch vertical leap, nearly eleven broad, short shuttle of four oh five, three cone of six six four, and and seventeen reps at two twenty five. He doesn't have what I call a hummingbird chest. Yeah, <laughs> that's fragile. With you know, sure. aviator right. bones are hollow, so you can fly. That's right. right. Uh, there's your there's your uh, science <laughs> one on one. But um, but yeah, he he and Lad McConkey are probably two of the better uh, pass catchers, technicians, route runners, those kinds of things. I mean, go back to look at look at that gauntlet drill at the combine. Those two dudes smoked it. I mean, never even hesitated and uh, and ran it. You know, I think um, Ricky Pearsall ran it like 20 miles an hour mm-hmm. at just a tick over six feet and 192 pounds. But, yeah, that's the thing about this position group is it is the richest, deepest in this class. You can find value throughout this thing. In fact, I should, I should plug this. Um, so Coach Mack and Mike Keith and I did a series of OTPs that start dropping tonight. Nice. And positionally, tonight it begins with quarterbacks and running backs. But Coach Mack and I discuss our top five each um, uh, or off the board and then a favorite outside of that top five each and uh, a sleeper pick. So those are are coming in rapid fire succession between now and and draft time. But um, when we get to the receivers, my favorite outside of the top five is Malik Washington from Virginia. I mean – you talk about a guy, you know, Virginia is not known for uh, its quarterback prowess right. and, and those things, and, and they had quarterback issues. But a guy that caught 110 balls for 1,426 yards and nine touchdowns at Virginia, and this is after being used sparingly um, at Northwestern for all that time before that. So he hits a transfer portal and just blows it up at a place that normally doesn't have – those kinds of things. And, of course, the first thing you would say is, but Rhett, he's 5'8", 191 pounds. First of all, he's built like a running back. He's he's rocked up to be that size. Okay, he doesn't have the height. But let me tell you something. And there are receivers every year that get an unfair comp on this. A height is the only difference in this. But I'm telling you who he is, Steve Smith. Oh, wow. Mm. One ten for mm. He got 110 and he- receptions? How about that? Led the ACC in receiving last season at UVA. He was also a team captain. I believe he Cavaliers. broke all kinds of receiving records in mm-hmm. Virginia last year, too. Yep. But he, he's got that dog mentality in him. Like that. And, and people talk about Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky being the yak king and yards after catch. 
this guy runs like a running back after he gets contact. Oof. He's he is, physical. He's also like if you were to trade back and add a third round pick, you are giving yourself the opportunity to draft a Malik Washington. Uh, you and I'll go a step further. You may be able to get him in the fourth round just because yeah. this is such right. a, a position rich thing. Like, let me say this. Uh, the Steelers, yeah. they need somebody to go with George Pickens, so I anticipate they'll take somebody a little earlier, but I could see them taking a Malik Washington in those late rounds, just like you're talking about with Emmanuel Sanders, A.B. You know, they have a history Volume of catching. Hitting, hitting on guys in, you know, fifth round, yeah. sixth round. But Malik Washington, I really like that guy's style of play. All right, Rhett, we have talked uh, off air a lot about some day three wide receivers, guys who are way off the beaten path. We're talking about between 20 to 32, where they're ranked just at the wide receiver position. We've talked a little bit about Luke McCaffrey at Rice. We've mm-hmm. talked a little bit about Jamari Thrash uh, at Louisville. Give me a name that is way off the beaten path, a day three wide receiver you are buying stock in. Uh, I am buying stock in Anthony Gould from Oregon State. He's 5'8", 174, but he ran a 4'3", 40, um, tested really well. And the guy comes in a small package, but he plays way bigger than than what, uh, what his numbers are. Um, don't overlook Tulu Griffin from Mississippi State, who has serious special teams value. Um, let me see. A couple of others here. Uh, Josh Cephas from San Antonio is Road one. Runner. Yep. Uh, Marcus Roseme Jack Saint yeah. from, from Georgia is going to be a day three guy who all he did at the Senior Bowl was just catch. That's what I was Catch thinking. balls, right? Yeah, a late round guy. Um, but there is so many guys. This draft is littered with them. And But let me say this. The guys are going to be taking on that Thursday night. And this is the the subject of the last Move the Sticks podcast with Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks. Uh, they looked at the, like the last 20 years. There was a piece that, that uh, Diana Rossini and a bunch of folks put together on The Athletic about this. And that top notch, and you look at who's taking in rounds two and three, it's different. Dogs. Like, like the, yeah. I mean, these are pedigreed dudes. Um, and what's crazy is... There, there may be unprecedented offensive numbers in this draft next Thursday night. There's been 19 players taken in the first round uh, in 2021. I think that's the all-time. I think it has a chance to bust that. There's a chance to go four consecutive quarterbacks. There's a chance to have uh, a record number of tackles taken. Uh, you, you name it. Like There won't be running backs and tight ends, but everything else is on the table <laughs> in the first round. I love it. Brett Bryan, make it a smarter about the draft. And next week, it'll be time to talk about the main position the Titans are looking at, the offensive tackles. Whoa. Yeah. Here we go. Some good ones uh, to discuss next week with Brett Bryan. Rhett, thank you as always. Thanks, Rhett. Glad to do it. Say it right. Inky Johnson, Midweek Motivation, sends us home coming up next. Fellas, if you're feeling tired, grumpy, have noticed a lack of motivation and drive, have weight gain and loss of muscle mass, these could all be signs of low testosterone levels. At Low T Center, they make it easy to get your levels checked. There's just a simple blood test with their on-site lab. You'll get your results back in about 25 minutes. Low T Center is not your typical doctor's office either. It's a concierge medicine for men. There are physicians specialized in treating low testosterone with customized treatment for each patient. Most health insurance is also accepted for the treatment. And they have affordable and convenient treatment options, including physician monitor self-inject treatments for established patients that ship directly to your home each month. So there's no need to drive to the facility each week. Right now at Low T Center, it's only $25 to get your T-levels tested with results back in about 25 minutes. Make your health and quality of life a priority. Go to LowTCenter.com to book your online appointment today. That's LowTCenter.com. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care.
Ramping up the show, Ramon, Kayla, and Will is brewed by 8th and Roast on 104.5 The Zone. And the Buck Rising show is coming up. You will find me watching footy today at a pub. If you need me, no, you don't this afternoon. Uh, NSC backstage tonight, 8 o'clock. Talk some soccer, hey. if that's your yeah. pleasure. Uh, NBC has announced its play-by-play voice of Team USA men's and women's basketball at the Olympics. Have you guys seen who has been announced as the oh. play-by-play voice? If it's not Snoop Dogg, do we have any it's... guesses? Snoop Dogg uh, is not Snoop. Reggie Dogg. Miller, play-by-play voice. Mm. Yeah, I got play. Play. Reggie Miller. I thought you meant color too. Was play-by-play voice. Snoop. <laughs> no. Play-by-play. Play. Uh, Jim Nance. Not Jim. No, because he's CBS. Damn. Uh, I ain't got a clue. I'm gonna be real. Noah Eagle. Will oh. be the voice of Team USA men's and women's basketball. Bert is shaking his head. Talk to us Wait, nicely. Bert? I have nothing nice to say about the Eagle family. I don't want to say what? anything. Oh, <gasps> what? Is, what is, don't why? say Ooh. anything there. I like his father. Just Iron, fine. Ian's awesome. Ian's awesome. Yeah, love his Iron, dad. A friend of the show. Yes, love his dad. <laughs> Which one's bald? What is he? The one of them bald? I am not. Oh, bald eagle. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, where, where are we going? I was like, I thought I had a full head of hair. <laughs> Sorry. That was yeah. just another dad joke. This um, <laughs> Papa? Noah's really good, though. <laughs> I don't remember. He's really good? I, does he do I'm March Madness? Along. Noah Eagle does not do March Madness. Okay. He does the Big Ten Saturday night game on primetime with Todd Blackledge. This is mm. his walking into a bigger roles during the Olympics. No, he's first. had a bigger role since he rolled out of the crib. He's in a bigger role already. Papa. I hear nepotism. He is the hey, fill-in. you said that word, not Papa. me. Three guys do play-by-play for the Brooklyn Nets. Ian Eagle, Ryan uh, Rocco, who's the voice of women's basketball on ESPN, and Noah Eagle. Hmm. He His first job at a college was he was the voice of the L.A. Clippers on radio. Must be nice. Just a very hard industry to break into. There are a lot of very talented people who work their whole life and work at places like, and no offense to a Middle Tennessee, or work work very small college jobs and bust their butts and are very good. And then there are people who roll out of bed and get opportunities <laughs> because their dad is extremely. And this is nothing new to play by play. No, it's don't not. don't get Joe like Buck. Joe Buck. I mean, there's yeah. so many of them, which Collins makes Chip Carey. It just mm. it just boosts the fire that burns within me. To, I like it. To allow other people to get some opportunities, yeah. too. He could have been the best tax guy. He could have been the best, I don't know, but he, he chose to, I don't know. I don't Noah know. Eagle isn't your best example, though, because Noah Eagle is very good at play-by-play. He is outstanding. He had no choice to be. In my opinion. Okay, <laughs> no, but that's, I don't, there are sons of broadcasters who will remain nameless. Yo, oh, you all can name them if you want. I will not name them that are not good but are on because of their last name. All I'm saying is when your first job is the Clippers, you have no choice but to be nice. good. If you are not good, then you're, as uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan said, you're never heard from again. So, like, I don't know. I, I, fine guy. I'm sure he's a great guy. I know absolutely nothing about him, but the situation just perturbs me a little bit. That's all. Well, you had a situation uh, this week, actually, that is exactly what you're discussing, as Chip Carey called Cardinals and A's for... The Cardinals and Chris Carey called the A's broadcast. Get out of here. Is Chris the youngest? Uh, I don't think so. Huh. But there, there are twins that were the co-voices of a minor league baseball team together. Oh. His twin sons, uh, Chip Carey's. <laughs> and now Chris is the voice of the Oakland A's, or one of the voices of the Oakland A's. They're twi- so both of them are in the business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. You're right. Wow. Oh, wow. I know. See, um, I can get into that. Woo. If they, like, tag team a game or, like, one of them's play by play, one of them's You take color. one pitch, I'll take yeah. the next. I can, I can get down with that. <laughs> That's but to, to Ramon's credit, after listening to Snoop Dogg call a game or call WrestleMania, uh-huh. that that is what he needs to be or doing. him doing when the horse was, because uh, the horse <laughs> is crib walking. Oh, so I got to get the horse in a video. <laughs> he's been, he's done, uh, he's done, he's called boxing matches before. Snoop is just very good at talking. I, yeah. I think that people that are uneducated about the sport they're calling, but are entertaining, are still fun to watch. Like, I always think we should have people like that call the X Games. Mm. Like, I don't need to know that somebody just did a double McTwist 540 double gainer <laughs> off the half pipe with a, uh, with a McFlurry grab at the end of the, <laughs> at the turn. Like, I just want to hear a guy with freaking Warriors. out and who doesn't even know what he's watching. Yeah. That's why, uh, the B, uh, or 
beast mode was so funny in Marshawn. terms of the Marshawn. I know he wasn't calling the game or anything, but anytime he speaks, like, I listen. Love it. It's authentic. <laughs> I it's really raw. Do. It's real. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we close the show with midweek motivation, Inky Johnson, as we always do on Wednesday mornings. Uh, again, if you missed our conversation with Trey Smith today, check out that podcast. It is already up wherever you download podcasts. Uh, we have tweeted that out as well at Ramon Kayla will where you follow the show on the artist formerly known as Twitter guard. You're in there. You're able to bang around. No diddy. And you'll hear that and a lot more. Uh, but right now you hear our guy, Inky Johnson, a little bit of midweek motivation because a lot of times like young people get the words, but they don't get the example. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oftentimes we give them the word, but we don't give them the example when the situation happens. We don't show them, right? In real time, when a situation happens, they never get to see the example of how it's supposed to look when a man has had a misstep and apology. You hear, hey man, if you do somebody wrong, apologize. But very seldom do a young person get to see a man at the top of his game, in his prime, say, you know what, man? That didn't sit right with my spirit. I was in the wrong. I apologize. Just for a young man to see that. He can get into a situation because oftentimes you hear about conflict resolution. Cool to hear about it, but when do you see it? Right? You hear about, hey man, if somebody do you wrong, don't do that. Practice forget. Yeah, that's cool, but when do you see it? Right? Like the reason I had resentment in my heart is because at the time when I was resenting my father, I just couldn't see it. Right? I wanted to see it. Right? I could talk to him, but I wanted to see it. Because it's a lot of things you run into later in life that if you see it, and so even with my children, the press is, oh, yeah, I'm going to try my best to say it, but also, man, I'm going to try my best to do it. What's going on? It's Will Bowling. Do you or someone close to you find it maddening to hear conversation when there's background noise? Maybe it's while you're dining at your favorite restaurant. Maybe you're watching your favorite team play in the hardwood this past month. You're in a crowded arena, but you find yourself not hearing the person two seats down from you. Well, if so, I want to introduce you to my friends at Brentwood Hearing Center. They've got five doctors of audiology, state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment, and the most recent hearing device technology. Their goal is to get you off the sidelines and back into the game of better hearing. With over 85 years of experience from their convenient location right off I-65 in Brentwood, they have a hearing solution tailored to each individual patient. Their number is 615-377-0420. You can visit them online at BrentwoodHearingCenter.com. Schedule an appointment there today, whether it's for you or for that family member who you know is in denial about how well they can hear anymore. We've all got them. So remember this number, 615-377-0420, online at BrentwoodHearingCenter.com. That's Brentwood Hearing Center, better hearing, better life.